You're listening to the smooth sounds of the three Bryces. The <laughs> three? Yeah. Oh, There's well. three of them. To make sounds this yeah. smooth, you need three Bryces. Yeah, you try to smooth it out like this with two Bryces, you're going to end up with rhythm all over your with, jeans. With, with rougher sounds than you'd like, yeah. I'll tell you that much. Uh-huh. I don't know if I've said this, but uh, so this is uh, uh, Harris Heller, who's got a bunch of free uh, copyright uh, friendly music on Spotify. And so I was using this music when I would play Hitman because I just wanted to have a kind of chill, yep. chill music while I'm assassinating Murdering. people. Murdering. Exactly. Hey, is um, it wrong that I just finally noticed the Diamond Club logo is in the Weird Things logo in there? It is? Look between the R and the N. Oh, yeah. Hey. Oh, wow. Hey. Whoa, it is. It's like the FedEx logo. Whoa. Oh, oh. Hey. It's pretty good. Oh. Sorry. Good. I'm Sorry. subliminal in here. <laughs> oh. You were just explaining this is by the three Bryces, otherwise known as? Uh, the the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa. Santa Ma Bryce. Ma Bryce. <laughs> uh, posh, posh Bryce. <laughs> Scary Bryce. Yeah. <laughs> That's the I... normal Bryce. <laughs> yeah. T Boz, Chili, and Left Bryce. Yeah, I was like, wait, like the spice was like, here's your name. You're gonna be Posh Spice. You're gonna be Baby Spice. Posh Spice like Baby Spice. What about you? You're scary spice. <laughs> yeah, it's an odd one. You know. <laughs> kind of curious how that survived. Uh, <laughs> seems fraud. What do you mean? Yeah. <gasps> All right, I think we're good here. We're coming at you live in 1080 definition. Yeah. Up and up, what? Up and up just a little bit. Uh, but hello. Open up the pit. Look at that. Yeah, we are in 1080. Yeah. Uh, we. Well, the, I've seen everything. The uh, the new Great Night stage will benefit from a higher resolution. So we're gonna bring back the. We're gonna take out the 60 frames, go down to 30, but bring it up to 1080. And, should be it should be a comparable data data amount. Nice. Yeah. We, we were wasting thirty of those frames anyways. There wasn't like even out <laughs> even the Justin and Brian in the same studio together and still not enough action. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'll just I'll just be moving like Kermit in peril. <laughs> I love how now we can really do the thing where you stretch your arm across and touch Brian. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, oh wait. Oh. Uh, Whoa! Oh, trying to see if I can. Oh, oh, no. Nope. Yeah, I don't no. think you can lie. It's like a damn street yep, fighter. From, a, from above. If you stand up and go down an like, angle, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, yeah, okay. All right, all right. Ah, uh, ooh, ah, uh, ooh, okay. Kind of. Yeah, it's kind the of pencil nice. illusion. Hey, it's another, your arm hey, up. There you go. Oh, yeah. Back, back, back. Yep, back, 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 back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, that's, 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 that's hey. disgusting. Wait, I got to grab a photo. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. I like how I immediately grabbed my camera instead of doing a screen grab. <laughs> I, I saved one. Cool. Got All right. All right. Hey, everybody. We're going to do weird things. You guys want to just jump right into it? Yeah, dude. Let's jump. Yeah. Let's do that hot stuff. And by the hot stuff, I mean the Pacific Northwest. Because mm-hmm. I got the hot stuff. Come and get it. Ba, ba, ba. All right. All right, Andrew. I'm going to count you in to start weird things here in three, two, one. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Ed Mean, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hello. Mr. Brian Brushwood. Ahoy. And Bryce Castillo. Hello. Hi. Gentlemen. Yeah. You know what time it is. What time uh, is it? You don't know what time. It's I, business I, time. Yeah. What's, what's no. going on? It's time for the hottest new show. CSI. Yeah! 3000 BC. 3000 BC. Oh. 3000 BC. 3000 BC. All right. So what's going on at that point? It's definitely. Uh, all right, listen space. up. I know that you're supposed to have your week off, Gracknar, but I'm afraid there's been a murder. It's time to rock. That's actually just a villager who a rock has fallen on that was making that sound. <laughs> like the, Brian's, they haven't invented glass yet, so Brian's just got like twigs that yeah. go around his eyes. Put branches just, on just, his face. I'm just holding two stones up to my like <laughs> fake binoculars. Uh, gentlemen, we're taking to the site of a Japanese cemetery. Okay. Okay. All right. But this is from uh, the Jamon period. 
which is you know we're a little little archipelago of Japan, known for its pottery. By the way, there's Jamon pottery. We used to use this like layered, like ropey sort of pottery. But we're not here to talk about pottery. We've got 170 bodies in this cemetery. Uh, okay. Hold on there, uh, Gracknar, the world's greatest detective. Listen up, G-Dog, Gracky. Uh, uh, are we sure these aren't terracotta soldiers? Because I heard they did that in China. They buried a bunch of terracotta soldiers? Yeah. How'd you know that? We're, I mean, like, you don't exactly have the internet here. I, in 3, I, hear, th I hear things. Where? Uh... On the wind. <laughs> oh, well, I, thanks for explaining it. Jeez. My, my, my friend said Totoro that early. told me. Uh -huh. Right? Okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he heard Japan. on the wind, right? Known yeah, for it in China. <laughs> I apologize for my tone. It makes a lot of, makes a lot of sense. Oof. I mean, in near, you know, maybe like 2,000 years early for the terracotta soldiers, but, you know, who's going to quibble? Yeah, I don't so, think, yeah. I think they're real. My sense says they're real. <laughs> the bodies are real. The bodies are real. Okay, not well, kind of soldiers. These I don't are even a know lot what of... those are. Okay, well, I mean, your I just... wind tells you wild words, my friend. I mean, I just know this area is known for its pottery, and we're looking at 170 dead bodies. And, yeah, you well, know, people die, dude. Okay, well, look, they I live and they die. Uh, live and let die. I, 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 That's the right. song I, I just wrote. I, I... <laughs> I, with my I, wife. <laughs> you hear yeah. that music labels? Who <laughs> <laughs> conveniently named Yoko, and we're in the right country for that. So, <laughs> mm. <laughs> uh, which is wrong, Beetle. Sorry. Yeah, wrong, Beetle. Oh, yeah. oh, oh I'm a wrong, Zeppelin yeah. fan. So, what do I know? Uh, anyhow, so we're uh, here. We are. We're in a cemetery. If people die and they get buried in cemeteries. I know the CSI is very new. Yeah. So yeah. that's why there's a lot of dead bodies here, guys. It's a cemetery. Mm -hmm. Like. Oh, it's like uh, what was the the onion headline? Archaeologists discover ancient race of skeleton people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, man, uh, all I'm gonna say is I'm seeing 170 people here who look a little bit dead to me. I feel like we should figure out what killed them. Now, uh, why don't you do uh, well, some wait, forensic hold on, hold on, analysis? I feel like we've yet to have the turn revealed here. On, on, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, hey, over here, guy, exposition guy. Here, it's my one job. I'm only in the first act of the yeah, show. Yeah, all right. Yeah, here we go. Ted and exposition. I'm the landlord I'm with the Krakenar. key of letting you in. You know. Yeah. I, I'm gonna tell you about her. Uh, so I, I'm I'm I'm, I'm Gracknar, the world's greatest uh, before Christ detective, <laughs> and uh, this is my sidekick, uh, uh, Jerry. Uh, Jerry Doug. Jerry Doug. Yeah. Jerry, first, first name Jerry, last name Doug. He's all herb. <laughs> so, so uh, gentlemen, I want to take you over to this this gravesite over here. Yes, and uh, I would uh, give you more details here, but our the website's taking forever to load, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna just uh, bally here a little bit. We got a body here, and it's not like the others. I follow you while flourishing my primeval cape. Uh, the problem well, is, I, I mean, I mean, what's so different about this body? Well, he's like missing a leg. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, it looks like he's missing a lot of flesh. Mm. Okay. Uh, like he's he's you know looks like kind of like missing some flesh, missing a bit of a leg here. Um. Grocknar. Looks pretty are, nasty. Are, are, yeah. Are, are there bears around here? Oh, I, I don't know. No. Okay, I didn't think so. All right. Uh, 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 it's a good uh, TED exposition. Uh, 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 so missing a leg and missing a lot of flesh. Uh, uh, just out of curiosity to confirm my scientific opinion, are there bears around here? <laughs> They're bears, but they're they're not really. A, this doesn't look like a bear bite to us. No, so too much flesh eaten for it to be a common bear. Yeah, maybe exactly the bear would I take the say. leg, but but he wouldn't stay for dessert. Uh, let me let me let me let me take a sip of my coffee and lean over this body and uh, take a look here. Uh, yeah, these bite these bite marks. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to examine them a little bit closer. Uh, Ted exposition. Um, is it just me, or do these look like smaller bites than I would expect? It's you. They're bigger bites than you'd expect. Mm. You know what? I forgot. I took opposite pills today, and uh, <laughs> I forget how they make me a little bit loopy. Gotcha. They're actually bigger than I expected. I lean over to Ted Exposition <laughs> and say, 
Opposite pills are dirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so we got that's some a little, little three thousand BC humor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are we sure he's dead? I kick him just to be sure. Yeah, uh, we're sure he's dead, right? After he kicks him, he doesn't move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we we we. Yeah, he's dead. I okay, mean, he's dead. I think. All right, hold on. While you're saying that, I'm lifting up the body. <laughs> okay. And holding it between us. It's and I, falling apart. It falls apart on you. Okay, but okay. hopefully enough of it is there that I put my arms through. And I start gesturing as you are talking. Jerry, Doug, <laughs> you've defiled our only piece of evidence because you wanted to play human puppet show. And I reply with, I'm Grocknar. <laughs> <laughs> I get upset at the desecration of a crime scene. I give Jerry, Doug, two extra opposite pills. <laughs> Which I think turns them right around to normal again. Uh, I guess fine. Okay. it's not the first one from fine. earlier, though. Right. I'm, I'm putting dirt in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, and, <okay>. I, <laughs> and I gotta be, I gotta clarify too. Like this is actually 1,000 BC. It's 3,000 years ago. It's 1,000 BC. Oh, 1, so I know that's BC. gonna. It's gonna change everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Wait, it's 1,000 BC. Gracknar was my great grandfather's <laughs> name. You can call me Gracky. <laughs> my name is is Doug Doug. <laughs> <laughs> they call me the Digger Dig Doug for short. We're, we're not gonna stay here. Go How is that? It's that longer. Way. It's longer than so. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've laid the desiccate. You've laid the 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 corpse down on the ground. Yeah. And missing a like missing a, a right leg. Missing a foot. On the other leg, okay. and missing a hand. Um, and missing are, a are hand. There a, all right, uh, all right. Is uh, there is there any friend or family that we can talk to, or is this just a a corpse that we got to solve this case on by ourselves? I, I think we have to do well, it forensically. Well, like if we're if we're modern day looking at this, definitely not. We could ask back then if we want to go. If we are back then, let, yeah. where are we going to frame this? Well, well, well. Uh, uh, let me ask this. Uh, uh, you know, we're we're just looking at what we got in front of us. Let's think about the territory because uh, I, it could be that the, the, the Yakuza are uh, older than we ever thought. And they were sure. rocking a thousand years before the birth of Christ, or I'm, I'm leaning towards wild animals here. Yeah. looks like it was a big chomper. Uh, 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 not many bears in the area. What's got a bigger mouth than a bear. T-Rex. An old lady. Oh, human. Well, I'm just saying, like maybe she was that this gossiping was, this about was a, them. Uh, this was a cannibal situation. Well, I keep saying. I keep trying to go Doug, for that, Doug. but it sounds like they're they're, they're big bites. So yeah, but so, but humans have a bigger bite than a wolf, right? Or would uh, it be smaller? I, 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 oh, can we can we? Wait, uh, are there uh, crocodiles? Uh, Ted, Ted Ted exposition. Can we examine the corpse again and see whether or not uh uh the the, the bites are in any kind of distinctive formation? Yeah, there's a symmetry to them. There's a structure to them. A symmetry. Hmm. Are they shallow, like 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 a human mouth, or or deeper, like a like a like a dog or or wolf's mouth? Deeper, deeper. And, uh, specifically, are are they jagged to indicate multiple teeth? Like, there's no chance that this is a clean bladed cut, right? This was teeth. There's a bit of serration to them. And bigger. When you say big bites. Ted, uh, uh, we're thinking bigger than a human mouth is what it, we're expecting. Yeah, Brian. You, excuse me, uh, Doug. 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 Uh, Doug. Dig, Doug, dig, Doug digger. Dig, 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 Doug. Doug. Douglas. Doug. Yeah. Dougman. Doug. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, bigger than a human mouth. Like a bear would be bigger than a human mouth. By the way. Yeah. Are there bears in the area? There are bears. It's Japan. There are bears everywhere. Why are you blaming the bears? I mean, I, 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 I'm not blaming anyone. What's oh, wait, wait, how close to the coast are we? Is there any chance this is a seafaring animal? We're in Japan. We're always close to the coast. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. All right. Is this, was this man known as a bit of a fisherman? Yeah, everybody's a fisherman in Japan. Uh, All right. Okay. All right. All right. I oh, wait. Oh, think I, I, you sound like you're about to end a clue game. Uh, shark. Mm. Ding, ding, ding. Article starts off. 
Marine biologists have spent decades counteracting the popular misconception that sharks are aggressive predators that target humans, an idea that became particularly prevalent in the wake of the Blockbuster Jaws franchise. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, we just dug up a grave in a 3,000-year-old cemetery and found a victim of a shark attack. Yes! Gracknar strikes again! The world's greatest BC detective! <laughs> uh, uh, so, 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 uh... How scared should we be of sharks? Because we hear a lot of conflicting reports. Uh... Uh, okay. So that's like, how scared should I be of lightning? Oh, not at all. Well, I like to spend a lot of time in high places in stormy weather flying kites. Okay, maybe a little more afraid. Uh, I mean, sharks... You're in the water, sharks there, shark attacks are exceedingly rare when you do find that either accidental or intentional, you look at you know, look at the number of shark attacks are very rare. When you, you get, you know, we, we have like summer of shark, which turned out statistically to be, you know, summer. Um there you be mindful, you know, you look at like, you know, people who are, you know, scuba divers often, the ones that you know might, you know, some I do know people that are like divers that go into like crazy places that have shark bites because they go where sharks go and that's yeah. what happens. And I know a guy lost an arm and a leg, um, but uh, it, those are bull sharks, which are scary. And it's just, it's like average person. No, but if you're mindful, if you're going to the ocean or water, you'd be mindful of them and other things, et cetera. But statistically speaking, you're, you're, you know, this is notable because it's not like we find in these Japanese fishing villages, lots of body, you know, when we do these, not there's tons of these excavations, but it's, it was an unusual thing to find a person that's been, eaten by a shark. So uh, uh, I'm assuming that the presumption is this person died of shark related injuries. It's not a case where it's like he uh, old, old, live, old, live, old live, two, two limb Gary lived you, a long, full life. Right. 1000 BC. No, uh, according, telling, according, telling according, shark to, that, stories, according yeah. to the article that we're going off, uh, it was, it was fatal based on the amount of injuries that he would have uh, sustained in the moment. Yeah. And they would have seen like some bone capping or regrowth or something. So yeah, it looked like that dude got. I think it's unwarranted. Everyone is afraid of the sharks, and they should be afraid of the jets. In this economy, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I yeah, I'm no, terrified I, of sharks. I think that I, this I, is fascinating, especially understanding. Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, do, do the Japanese have the same kind of fear of sharks that that has been ingrained into America? Like, is is that is there a same a similar culture there? Well, fishing cultures tend to have a wariness of sharks. They have yeah. a wariness, you know, sharks. Whalers would have a wariness of whales because of you get close and that. But you know, shark shark fear. If you read uh, stories, nautical stories, etc., the idea of shark you used to you used to associate sharks and pirates and shark infested waters. So sharks are a real thing, and you used to have you would have you know, you get sailing vessels where or whaling vessels that would process the whale on board the ship and leave a trail of blood and all this other stuff, and you'd get sharks that would follow them. You did not want to go overboard in there. And because the sharks followed the food, and that would be, you know, trouble. And that's why, you know, the stories are like some sailors never bothered to learn how to swim, because what was the point? <laughs> you were gonna die oh, anyways. Oh, that's like astronauts learning. Like, why would I learn how to hold my breath and pinch my eyes real tight for the vacuum against of space? It's yeah. like if it's I'm in rat. that situation, oh, we're yeah. done. Yeah. Yeah. So uh superstitious perhaps, but still. So anyhow, yeah. But like I said, I'm terrified of sharks, but then like I you know, I mean, of the, of the three of us, only one of us has been on a shark specific incursion that was broadcast uh, on cable television. But of the three of us, I could be in a pool and I hear a little bit of a splash, you know, at night or whatever. I'm out of the water. It's like, <laughs> it's a chlorine shark. It's in here. I don't know how it happened. I just. Well, whether or so. not Andrew's suspicious, you, dear listener, shouldn't be of going to patreon.com slash weird things at patreon.com slash weird things. You can support this very show. Make sure that we keep doing it each and every Monday and make sure that you get our after things podcast where we discuss all the, the, the ways that we create our, our own careers as, a, as independent uh, entrepreneurs and creators. It's all available to you, dear friends at patreon.com slash weird things.
I this isn't like a whole topic to talk about, but I thought this was funny because I was looking through Science Daily and I saw this headline. Don't worry, birds won't become dependent on you feeding them, study suggests. Oh, uh, I mean, I I have a I have four birds at my house that might disagree. <laughs> I was about to say, like, if you stop feeding them, I feel like they'd have thoughts about yeah, it. Yeah, well, they I meant mean, wild, wild yeah. birds, but I just thought, like, and then you see my doctor, bird, birdie, birdman, <laughs> bird extraordinaire. Yeah, I'm a good bird. <laughs> uh, isn't that a thing with uh, like like a uh, I don't know. Like what? What woodland creatures do we hear this about? Like, like don't feed the blanks, or otherwise they won't Bears. hunt. I guess, I, you know, like a, um, uh, 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 there, there was a feral cat around here for a bit, where where the advice was, uh, apparently with feral cats, like feed them just barely enough to feel good, but not so much that they stop eating the vermin that that's around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in this case, they were looking at bird feeders. I see where bird feeders are a good idea or bad. Because I'm like, oh no, don't put bird feeders in your backyard. It gets birds. Birds could be too dependent upon that. But they're like, they did like some radio track and said, like, no, nah, like these birds are still foraging far and wide, and it didn't appear to make them dependent. But it was one kind of bird. It wasn't like seagulls at a oceanside resort or whatever else. So. Yeah, I, I would I would say, you know, so we have a couple bird feeders now in our backyard, and uh birds are very defensive creatures. And so I, I don't think I, I could see with wild migrations and me, this is me only guessing like by, by way of bird psychology based on our own birds and watching the wild ones, uh, they like food where they can find it, but they are so defensive that like they are always on the lookout. So I could totally imagine that if it, yeah, even if there's one little spot that they know they can get just a little peck. Uh, uh, they're always going to go and find other things because they need to diversify their existence because that's like their entire existence is, is just not falling prey to other creatures. Yeah. So anyhow, I mean, and it's, but it's interesting too, because you think about there's so much things we're told don't do this because of that. And sometimes it makes sense. 90% of the time it's probably very good, but yeah. often we don't experiment or test. We, we talked about a while ago, the, was it like the five foot rule, the six foot rule, you know, when it came to like sneezing and stuff. And it turns out there wasn't a lot of science for that. And then also the science of particulates, but the five, like the five uh, uh, nanometer or whatever, the, the five, whatever size that was, they said, yeah. oh, particulates over that. I felt like, no, that was not, that was a, a rule of thumb that had a lot of fuzziness and everybody said it for decades as if it was this fact, this un incontrovertible fact. And it's good to sort of go, is this true? Yeah, look, because... science is evolving. Science is constantly evolving. That's that to yeah. me is the commitment to science. Is is the commitment to understand that these are all of our best guesses and that we should test them robustly and regularly. Yeah, like this theory that we have a moon. Mm. Yeah. I mean, come on. Bring me back some I green don't see cheese, it. Bezos. I'm looking out my window right now. Don't see it. Yeah. Yeah, if you're the moon, call us now. Prove you're real. Yeah. Exactly. What? Exactly. The phone isn't ringing? Mm. QED, mm. my friends. Exactly. There's Graknar so, tapping his forehead. <laughs> so on that note, we got our uh, our UAP report. Remember, we call them UAPs, guys, not UFOs. UFOs are what silly, crazy people think are cool. Okay. UAPs are what serious people... Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yes, and the difference is very distinct because a phenomenon is not an object. Well, it right. could be, and an object can literally mean an item or instance of, but that's not important. So the government had the report, and they said, hey, 143 of these can't, 143 of 144 mysterious flying objects can't be explained. And then they're like, we have limited data. Uh, and We've talked about this before, and, <laughs> and, and it gets emotional because it, for some people, borders on a religious issue because really, really, really want to believe in aliens or extra dimensional entities are here and visiting us, which none of us here has a problem with, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, because I mean, if, if, if they exist, when, yes. when, when, yeah. when you think about it. Oh, Brian, you and that. <laughs> Like a aliens are, <laughs> aliens are are kind of just like an extension of a folk religion, right? Like if 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 you know, this is just a different version of talking animals. This is something from beyond the stars that has a sentience beyond our comprehension. 
Yeah, and and so when we talk, when we for us, we've spent we've been involved for decades with on the fringes of oh my god, is this real? This is not you know. Justin worked with me. Justin interned at the James Randi Foundation. And on a daily basis, we would get a package or some claim or something like this. <laughs> and 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 sometimes from people, academics, like I can't explain that I'm a smart person, and a smart person tells you this is not real. And and you you and I don't know. Like I can't. I'm like I can't explain 143 of these things. I've seen a couple of the best ones, and I've seen really compelling explanations. Like no, this is probably this that makes me suspect that the many the others may have explanations like this. And I think some of the people who are yelling the loudest don't want to hear that. You know, I'll give you an example. And I don't, and I don't, we're seeing a, one of these, we're seeing a scientist who's making an argument of like, why would aliens come here? And I've heard some people I respect saying that, like, that's not a good argument to go. Why would they come here? Why? That's not, a, doesn't matter. We can't talk motives. We can only talk about what, what we, we see and what we is have. it. Yeah, what we, what we know it can be and what we don't know it can be. Exactly to argue like, well, they don't have a re well, that's not that's not science. So, uh, we I remember once I worked at the James Randi Foundation and I got an email from a guy who was a scientist. I'm trying to remember his field. I want to say he was. I think he was a psychologist, and he's like, "This is this is this website thing. It reads your mind. This is amazing." Like, I don't know what algorithm they're using. Can you explain this? And I'm like, well, let me see. And he's like, this is like, this is genuine. He's like, this is like genuine. Like, and he, I click the link and there are five cards. Yeah. It tells you to remember one of five cards. Yes! Oh my God. And you press the button, they get mixed up and then your card's missing. And, and I'm like, I'm like, and I don't want to ruin the trick. I'm like, I email back the guy. And again, this guy's a professor. I'm like, Hey, uh, did how many times have you done this? I was like multiple times. Like, did you notice anything? He's like, he, he got angry. Like, why are you playing this game with me? Whatever. This is like, this isn't, you know, why are you doing this thing? Why are you ignoring this? Why won't you, you can't explain it, whatever. I'm like, Hey, I don't want to ruin this for you, but, uh, you know, next time, like, you know, remember two cards, you know, and it goes back like, Oh, it got them both. I'm like, okay. Now five cards. Yeah. And he was irate. He's like, irate. Like, he was just, I know. He was like, I'm an expert. I'm a blah, 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 blah. And then he's like, oh, God. He was like, oh, geez. I'm <laughs> so sorry. I'm so sorry. He thought it was in his area of expertise. Yeah. He thought it was his area of expertise, but it wasn't. And that's part of the problem. We've seen this with people I know who are critical of experts over the last year and a half are now going, no, well, no, I'm an expert. I would know what these things are because I'm an expert on you know, FLIR imaging from Raytheon, you know, imagers made between 2006 and 2012 or whatever. It's like, no, you're not. And even, and I get here, well, these pilots, but no, they won't. We wouldn't, we wouldn't know. We, 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 if you don't have an explanation for it, it means you don't have an explanation for it. It could be unexplainable, whatever. So anyhow. Well, and, and that's one of the things where, and we've talked about this before, but it's like that, that great leap from, thing you don't understand to fantastical explanation. Uh, and it's like, uh, it seems like the fantastical explanation is quite purely an artifact of what century you happen to be born in. If it's, if you happen, if it happens to be 1950 AD, then, uh, it's probably a Russian spacecraft. If it happens to be the 21st century, it happens to be a uh, simulation theory breaking at the edges. If it happens to be 1650, it's Satan. If it happens to be, you know, you know, 3000 BC, it happens to be demons or whatever. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's that, it's that discomfort. Like, yes, we all agree. Here's the thing that we do not understand. And I, I, I've said this many, many times. I don't understand the compulsion to fill in the gap and, and to close the loop on that. I will, I'm going to give two, I've tried to give this explanation on Twitter to people who kind of should know better, but it kind of fell on deaf ears because they didn't want to get it. And that, because I get this, well, the pilot saw this, the instrument said this, these witnesses saw this. And I'm like, let me introduce you to a concept in magic called dual reality. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Pilot. I see a light in the distance. Instrument. Bokeh effect. Right. All of a sudden, it's the, you know, let's say there's an airplane way off in the distance. Now we don't do the instrument because of we've seen the video, the optics, it gets blown up and creates this bokeh of like a triangle. Pilot. I see something in the distance. I see a triangle on my scope. 
person, people on ship. Do you see it? Yes, we see the light in the distance. They don't see the triangles. They yeah. see the lights of the airplane. On the instrument, it looks like a triangle. That story becomes you had all witnesses reported seeing this flying triangle. And that's the problem. People who I've, I've looked at, really smart people, don't understand how to dissect what's going on between what the image says, why an eyewitness can confirm a thing, but it's the thing that has a different thing. And this is a common, 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 common thing that when you wouldn't, we would go through UFO reports, all this sort of stuff. When you'd start to drill down and talk to different people, like, well, no, I saw this, but Frank said he saw this. Yeah. And that's, and I agreed. And then you're like, oh, because we don't have two different instruments showing the same phenomenon. We have one instrument showing this, and we have these eyewitness accounts saying, I think I saw this, I saw the thing. And, and, and I see that people who are very attached to maybe there's some cool new physics going on or something. I would love that. I would love yeah. that. But it's just my narrow expertise was how do you do, how do you get down to what people really said happened and what took place there? And these things tend to fall apart. Well, and also you know, I was actually talking to a, a, a friend about this not too long ago. And and he was like, oh, you know, I, I, I think it's it's either like. Uh, uh, some some secret weaponry from China or Russia, or we want to show off to China or Russia that we've got some crazy secret uh, secret weaponry. And I'm like, well, hey, look, man, anything's possible. Uh, but that would seem to be a curious way to uh, uh, uh get the word out. If you specifically just wanted those governments to know things, there are ways you can do that in, in a more direct and a more clandestine way than leaking it through, you know, uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. Well, and, and I do think it's worth remembering how this came to be. If I understand correctly, the, the reason for this information dump of 144 unexplained uh, aerial phenomenons is part of the COVID package, because who wants to vote against a COVID package that has some weird, you know, your, your, your um, uh, out-of-the-box president wants uh, all of this released or whatever? Uh, like, let's say, let's say as part of my, uh, let's say the IRS wants to audit me, and they're like, and also as part of the audit, you need to spend two full days going up and down your property and bring us anything you cannot identify. And in which case I'll walk up and down because I, I mean, who am I to say no to the government? And I'm like, I don't know. I have no idea what this is. Uh, is it a piece of, of, of um, uh, turf from the road? Is it deer scat? I, I don't really know. I'll just put it in a bucket and then, and then hand it to them. And they're all like, well, these are of these 144 weird things on your property. That's the name of this show. We could only identify one of them, which means, and then you have this interested third party going nuts off to the side where it's like, I told you there's proof that Sasquatch is being harbored by the weird things audience. Look how long they've been I'll, talking about him. I'll tell you another factor with these images is that, um, again, I'm totally open. I, I believe we live in a simulation. So and if, if there are Pegasus has started flying across the sky, I'd be like, yeah, that fits in with my theory of what's possible. <laughs> I, I'd be, you know, I, I can accept this. Um, but, you know, when I look at these images here, I'm like, okay, these are using very complex systems. The first time most people, outsiders, are looking at any of this, of any kinds of footage from these thermal imaging systems is when they see this footage. And they're like, well, yes, but people, experts within the field are doing that. True. I'm like, yes, there are experts. There are pilots who see this stuff or looking at this going, this is something I don't know. There is part of the problem of, self, of creating self-driving cars is that every day cars encounter a new phenomenon in situations never existed before. And we're trying to build complex neural networks that can't get fooled. Every day, people get into accidents. Every day, you know, you have people make mistakes. Pilots make these mistakes less frequently because skies are a little bit you know less opportunity for that but that can happen and you get have you ever done a 4 a.m mission on this meridian with the light coming over here and these things here every time these conditions are different and you look at this footage and you're also thinking if you're the manufacturer of these systems and you're aware of their defects you do not tell people there is a defect there if you're the military and you're aware that our systems can be spoofed or can have this thing under this problem you probably don't disclose that there may be people who very much know, oh yeah, this is an instance of this thing here because of, you know, the this, you know, like that somebody says like this just looks like a lens flare on a thermal imager, you know, yeah. like and I don't know enough to know. This is the triangle thing we're looking at here, which is the, the bokeh effect. And and that's still people are like, oh, what's this? And you get like well, and, and you I, get these all these 
Which is one fact. They're getting these explanations that pop up on the screen. Is it debris? Is it atmospheric? Is it foreign? All those are external. Very few of them want to go, is it something within the housing the of the camera? Yeah. Is it, is it yeah. some way that it's uh, uh, processing well, the light? And le left out of the story is these instruments were not designed to be general purpose uh, imaging instruments. They are designed to look for a specific type of enemy aircraft or, or a specific type of targeting phenomenon. It would be the equivalent of me um, hunting for ghosts, walking around with an air pressure gauge. And the moment I move or spun to the left or right and saw a needle move, taking that as evidence of something. Yeah. It's like that, that, that this object was never intended to measure for. Also, if I might offer some totally unsolicited slander of the American military. Oh, hells yeah. People in the Air Force are weird. I'm just going to say, just totally out of school. This is true. They're weird. They're just weird. And people in the Air Force so have these told are me made, that. But are you saying, wait, 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 what are you they're, saying? They're, they're, you don't have to be the smart to fly a plane? the quirkiest branch of the military. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. I'm going to say is they're the quirkiest branch of the military. A lot of these were naval, naval force, though. <laughs> Six of one. <laughs> they saw mermaids. Half a Sailors saw mermaids. Of another, they did. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's like, yeah, I mean, it could be these, but like my frustration is that when people start with, well, what are we looking at? Like, what are we, how do we know it's not, you know, a light reflecting off of something else inside of there? Like, I mean, it's just there, when I see people start way over here and they haven't even started at this start to sort of figure this stuff out, to look at this stuff, I'm like, well, I don't know if these people really know how to examine this stuff. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, again, um, mm, I, 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 yeah, it, it, wrong instruments. They're not looking for that thing. All, all they have is something they don't understand. And maybe that something is dumb. Uh, in fact, most yeah. likely it's dumb. Yeah. And I, there, we've seen a hesitation too, because we've saw this before where some people were like, I know I saw this. I know I saw this. Then like, oh, at this, this time and day, there was a Sikorsky helicopter doing a maneuver here, testing on a spotlight, doing this sort of thing. No, it wasn't that. <laughs> right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. All cool. right. Cool. Nice. That's a good. Right. Nice that was. Way to I remember do. there was like the the like oh we're like twelve mysterious lights over like Arizona. We're like oh these sort of things that got news like oh look at this and I had a friend like oh how do you explain that? And I pulled showed him the web page for the aerial flares. The company that made them showed the flares. Showed him footage of what this looks like. It's like I don't know if it's that. I'm like I'm like you you know it's that. And the fact that in your head there could be no conceivable explanation of an alien says you you are not equipped to look at this phenomenon objectively. Well, and and um, that maybe should be the pre-qualifying question before any discussion begins is before we even talk about what it is, are you comfortable with never knowing, and uh, yeah. uh, and and assuming that it's probably something dumb. Uh, check one box, yes or no. And most people, like, I don't know, they may say, they're, they're, they, what, what they will do is they will check yes as long as I get to understand whatever it is. Yeah. But if I don't get to understand whatever it is, then no, I need to have a made-up explanation because, I, heaven forbid, I, I should handle not knowing how something is done. Yeah. There's a, uh, I heard this expression used, which was like a burden of proof, hot potato. And the idea is that, because like with the lab leak hypothesis gaining more traction, natural origins uh, promoters, and again, I think we're all the same opinion. We don't know. We think it's very suspicious about the lab leak and we want more data, but we're not going to tell you one way or the other what really happened because we don't know. But you get the pe the natural origins people like, well, the, the, the they failed to prove the lab leak hypothesis. And it's like, you know, extraordinary claims which are extraordinary evidence. And lab leak people are like, you failed to prove the zoonotic origins. Where's your evidence? Who has to do? Who has to provide the extraordinary evidence? Because that was, a, you know, the statement by, you know, Carl Sagan: extraordinary claims require yeah. extraordinary proof. And it's like, and it's some. Oh, mine's not the extraordinary claim. Yours is. You have to prove your point of view. No, yours is. And so, you yeah. kind of fall into that. Good lord. Yeah. Hey, what can you do? But, um, yeah, don't trust anybody ever. <laughs> DTA, friends. Don't trust anyone. Uh, so, uh, you know, you know what, uh, you know, it's, you know, it's happening tonight, right? 
No. No, no I don't. What's happening tonight? Um, you, know, you know about the, uh, you know, the, the Rat King? Oh, yeah. <gasps> new, new, new Demio. New Demio. New Demio. Oh. Yeah. Rat Demio. King actually available now. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 only I had a couple oh, hours gap oh, between. Oh, oh. So I don't, I don't know for audience who hasn't heard us talk about this enough. We are very obsessed with this game. It's this is, we're, we're starting to get, dare I say, good at it. <laughs> finally, yes, yes. Um, <laughs> as we understand how to play the way it wants us to play. <laughs> So yeah, uh, uh, Demio, which is available on Steam, and the way we play it is through the Oculus uh, Quest Two. Uh, uh, it is a table, essentially a tabletop game that has uh, a D and D esque uh, mechanics for a dungeon crawler, uh, and had up until today only one uh, three level quest that you could uh, that you could play. But that is no longer the case as now. The uh, the the dark elven queen is joined by the rat king, as uh, uh, we can now explore further into the underground. Now to point out, the game is replayable because every time you play it, it changes the layout and the locations of the monsters, which is very cool. So yeah, it's that's it is, what it makes is, it replayable. Rogue, rogue like, as as yeah. as they say, it's never the same game twice. Although obviously all the mechanics are are the mm. same, but that means that sometimes you get fairly easy board sometimes you get a really a, a damn near impossible board sometimes i mean sometimes you get a board where all the chips are stacked against you and yet somehow you take down the elven queen without a single bit of damage that's yep. skill and then yep and then your friend suspects maybe the chips weren't stacked against you and that you're just a bunch of <laughs> well maybe know. maybe somebody's just bitter because he had to leave uh <laughs> five minutes before we killed the elven queen without any damage maybe uh, but yeah, no, I, I friendship I, over. Done. <laughs> I love that game. I've played a bunch just solo. Like I'll just, I'll just strap it on and, and play the skirmish mode. Uh, and it's great. It's awesome. Come on, wrong come about on. Those two sentences. Come on. Um, all right. All right. Uh, all right. All right. Yes. So, uh, I, it, it, I, uh, what, one of the things about Demio is that you get to play cross platform outside of me. steam. It's the... Demio. 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 It's Demio. For demon. Demio. Oh, you you don't get the official uh, Demio YouTube channel where they explain that. Sorry, Brian. Please go ahead. I thought it was Demio as in Demi Moore. I thought it was a Demio in that uh, we would like to demonstrate our ability to make money off of you. <laughs> <laughs> I kept calling it Demio too. I just had to bust on somebody else. And That's it. So See, now he wants to be Brian, like I'm sorry, to the I, cool I, kids. I, All the cool uh, kids. What, that so, he's, so, he so, so right. uh, here's my question. I know. I know. It's uh, one of its benefits is that it does cross platform. D does it do any other platforms besides Steam two dimensional or? Uh, like they're I'm waiting for the phone on, app. It, it, it seems that's like that's what I hear be, they're working on. Oh, dude, that's going to be huge. Yes, we'll never get anything done. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the reason I brought this up is not because we're like a nerd obsessed with it. Yeah, we're no. not nerds. We're, we're not whoever, nerds. whoever no. out there is thinking no. we're nerds, no, boy, you're, you're the nerd. nerd. Would, a, would a nerd strap VR onto his face to play it? No. Nope. Come on. Come on. We are real. We are giga chads. <laughs> there are there are nerd. You know, VR is one of those things. It's like computers. We knew in the '60s and the '50s, computers were gonna be a thing. We knew they were going to be a thing, right? Because how and whatever. Because like, yeah, oh, this does something. Does something cool. And and but in the early '70s, we were like, well, maybe maybe they're not. And then you had the PC, and the PCs were cool. But then like, what do you do with them? And then people discovered things like spreadsheets. And then you got PC gaming and then the internet and everything else like this. And now we have computers in our pockets and the, and there, you know, this period like, oh, does a person really need a computer? And now like we, we, we think that some people want to write this as like a right that everybody should have internet access that yeah. you can't function without it. VR, we're watching this, you know, years ago we went to one of the first like VR meetups in LA mm -hmm. and watching. So the evolution of this and people have been trying to make this argument like, no, this is why it's important. This is why it's now. And it's like, well, we know a thing's a thing when you just keep doing it, like the internet, like email. VR, great games in VR. We talk Beat Saber is great. Beat Saber is a great use of the mechanics. It's your hands are using something. You're in a visual environment. You're standing still and things come towards you. 
I think Beat Saber is phenomenal. There's some other games like that, but that's like a whole nother level. And I'm not saying this is that, but this game really proved to me Think what we I think we talked about before was like if you can get a really good tabletop game to work in VR, it's great because then you can be with your friends who live hundreds of miles away. And I think this is just a really, really, really great like walkabout golf, another one, phenomenally yeah. fun, chill, and this is another level like that. And so I think this is exciting because I think this kind of came out of nowhere and what else is coming. I think, yeah, the the biggest and that really is is a credit to the quest Two being such a casual device you know unlike uh a something where you got to boot up a computer and, and strap you know something uh, uh to your head that's tethered to you know uh, your wall or your pc uh this is something that like i i i don't know if i've since i've gotten the quest Two, i have not gone on a trip where i have not brought the quest Two, because it is that easy for me to uh, uh strap onto my head and uh uh you know, just if we're playing golf or, or Demio or, or uh, anything else, having that ability is uh, uh, just clutch. And so if it's that fast to get into the game, then that means you've unlocked that much more of a social element where, you know, uh, I don't think without the hardware, we would have group chats where we just ping out to a bunch of people, hey, who's playing blank? And we just go and, and play it like that. That now is just a, a reality with enough people that we can regularly play these games, which is like uh, awesome. It, 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 it really is just such, especially coming out of the pandemic where everybody was kind of isolated. The idea of just having that kind of time with your friends is precious. Like, like it, it is the, the, the fidelity is that good. You feel like you're hanging out with them in a way that you really don't with Zoom even. Like, like I, I feel like I'm connecting with people more when I'm playing walkabout golf or Demio than if I were to start a group chat and we were all just to kind of talk in these boxes. I don't know what it is, but maybe an, an elimination of like the, the, the verbal cues of kind of wishing and missing that we were all in the same place. And instead we're in this fantasy world, all focused on this task and succeeding and failing with that kind of uh, uh, input. It just is magic. I and it's funny because when you're in there, you look around and your friends all have these medieval Mardi Gras masks on. Yeah. And you don't pay attention or care, but you see their hands moving. It is that is a very the idea of presence is something that it works the best in some sort of abstract level, and we keep trying to make it very precise. Like it was for a period of time on Hacker News every day. I've created a new VR space for people to VR, you know, do VR chat, and it's just literally a 3D environment with somebody's face stuck to a figure and like you just move it around. You're like, yeah, that's what I that's what's missing for me in Zoom. Yeah. Is you know, a, a, a plane that I move around and go, no, I'm talking to you. So I have a pitch for you. Go. I have a pitch. Okay. The idea of being able to do a podcast, there's something neat about the idea about being able to go and do something in VR because the idea is I could do talking, but then have it generate the visual element. Cool. And something that kind of clicked for me thinking about this right now is the idea of being able to do this with a podcast theater where you get to see people as avatars in their reactions instead of looking down and looking at the side to have that audience in front of you and when they do their plus up or react or heart 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 thinking about that we put these things on and we have the cartoon versions of ourselves or whatever or eventually really realistic versions but then you're in front of that audience i mean i think there's uh, there's a space for it you know, I, 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 I think that would be something that we would have to figure out culturally kind of where it fits in. You know, the, the, uh, the, the, the concept of the hangout right now is very natural. But even then, it's like I've never had any interest in doing VR chat. But I love the idea of chatting while we do a thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, that's great. So if, you know, it, it, it is some version of that or, or some version of like, oh, well, could I play a game like in a, in a, in an almost like Twitch streaming scenario, but the chat room is there next to me or, or in the gallery, like at, while I'm playing golf, or am I, am I just doing an actual like podcast? Like, am I performing? Am I the, the, the main event? Like, I think that there's a lot of, there's, there's a lot of places you can explore. I, I'm curious. I'm curious. Like Brian is a 
does any element of that appeal to you or to you is it like a thing to get away from broadcasting no it, it it's uh if anything it's a way to um uh i don't know you, you you've heard the trope of like uh if you're a father trying to connect with your teenage son uh saying son i'd like to talk to you is not going to be very effective but if you go out in the backyard and you throw a ball back and forth before you know it you're sharing things you're you're doing the other thing and it and it brings a comfort and a, a level of letting your guard down uh, that I think that we've all experienced in uh, in VR in a way that you can't get from Skype or from a Zoom meeting because they are so formal. And and I think just, just having a, a nothing MacGuffin to do, I mean, that's the reason that family reunions, the first thing that happens is our family takes out a 500 or a thousand piece puzzle and puts it down there so that it's just, it's just a thing that everybody can do and then chit chat while they're, while they're doing it. I think that's our new company, Brian. We're going to do VR puzzles. VR puzzles. <gasps> it's actually not Because you could have, they could be three-dimensional. Oh, or, or I, I, well, th there are various Rube Goldberg-y type of games, but, uh, but it, yeah, no, I love that. Uh, I, I, and to be honest, Demio is a puzzle. It's, 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 it's a fairly simple puzzle. You know that you're going to spend 60 to 90 minutes in there. You know that, that you're going to work together and, you know, mainly you, you work at your own pace and have a conversation similar to golf. Same, mm -hmm. same kind of thing. Uh, there's no time pressure. There's no competitive pressure outside of, you know, all of us working together to defeat an imaginary bad guy, which is part of the reason I'm so excited to see Demio uh, uh, succeed is because um, the only limitation is I think the most I've ever been able to play is with three other people. And I can't wait until every time there'll be, you know, maybe one person's on a phone or whatever. And, uh, and yeah. we're able to play four at a time. Sorry, I'm writing this down. VR puzzle, put together the 3D environments. They come alive when all the pieces are there. Pieces tell a story. Because imagine like putting together like Hogwarts or like one of the rooms in there. Oh, area, yeah. The characters. Oh, sure, sure. Oh, and then Sorry. and then and then much like a a picture becomes complete when you finish the puzzle. This oh, would yeah. this would be assembled, and you would be able to or see even an just animation the, the or parts something. of the puzzle yeah. come alive. Like yeah. so, you know that you've gotten the the quarter of the room that you that you need to put together, and and that way that can help you understand yeah. where else everything needs to go. Yeah, somebody mentions Gather Town. I've done a couple of those. To me, it feels like an unnecessary UI. To I like the idea of being able to get together different rooms with the people, but the guy like oh, I've got to bring my character here to do this. I'm like, let me just click. So on what, that's like a but, little like like a, like a Sims kind of thing. Yeah, got gotcha. you. But you're, but you're just hanging I, out. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's exciting in the way we're rethinking these things. I think it's, it's very, very cool. So, yeah. anyhow, and you know, the more brains thinking about stuff, and I like the fact that just delight comes out of nowhere. So, gentlemen, when he picks, yeah, sure. dude, I got a weird pick. Uh, I was feeling a little bit nostalgic. I went on eBay and looked up how much a uh, uh, it was to get an Apple IIe computer from back in the day and whether or not it would function. <laughs> I was thinking about green monochrome monitors and all that stuff. And I uh, ended up typing just into DuckDuckGo. I typed in Apple IIe emulator, and it popped up with this uh, uh, cool little javascript emulator and uh there's a, a, a few discs that you could throw in and i threw in oregon trail and just unironically played oregon trail for the first time in 20 years uh full on naming everyone after my family and i want to i want to note that i made it 36 miles out of town before my wife had col cholera and uh <laughs> Uh, I played on the highest difficulty, which means as a farmer, because you have the, the least amount of money. Uh, but my favorite part was like, I went very, very slow. I spent like two, two and a half, almost three hours hunting, uh, uh, moving slowly, keeping everybody clothed and fed. And then we got to like the, one of the last icons was the Snake River. And the Snake River is just too wide and too deep. And, and it killed two of my family members. Mm. And I was just like, you know, this game is BS. The Apple II is BS. Manifest Destiny is BS. The Hudson River Valley Art School is BS. All of this is BS to keep this farmer down. And I was thrilled that the official Oregon Trail uh, Twitter account 
uh, retweeted me and then said, R.I.P. Bonnie and Josie. <laughs> with, with smiling, crying eyes. <laughs> it was really, really great. <laughs> what, uh, uh, where, where did you play that? Do you remember uh, the website? Uh, yeah, yeah, if, if you just do a search for Apple II uh, emulator, uh, Apple II emulator. Mm -hmm. I think it should come up, but but it's this JavaScript. That's a mobile thing or a PC thing? Uh, I mean, it's a, just a jo It's in browser. Oh, JavaScript. in browser. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool. I remember you know, back in ancient history, the didn't have a computer at home. We had the Apple IIs in the library, and after school, you'd go sign your name on a list for your turn to go play Oregon Trail on the Apple II, and it was that game. It is a great example of that there's there's I'm sure there have been studies about like what what are the mathematics of creating something that's complex enough to be interesting to you create some symbolic ASCII or rep that's a wagon and that's this and the little music do 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 it just it hit all the right triggers and there have been new ver they continue to make versions of it, but yeah. it is just I am amazed at how big retro culture culture is, like how popular retro games are which i mean we still play chess and tic-tac-toe yeah. so why am i surprised i don't know yeah i mean it, it was just it is a golden age of games like these games stuck around and 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 were built upon for a you know a reason because these mechanics work and they're awesome and sometimes you want to go back and and experience it in its purest form before things were added on to even if they're maybe a little bit more frustrating like uh bonnie and josie found out when they uh, spilled off that boat and died hmm. you know snake river and the curse kept I, going. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna drain every drop i'm, I'm gonna become a, a a mogul and i'm gonna i'm gonna sell off all that water it's gonna be great <laughs> um i gotta pick so uh, I am a gigantic fan of Dana Carvey, the comedian from Saturday Night Live, a stand-up comedian, and he's got a podcast called Fantastic uh, with Dana Carvey. I will give you a warning that unless you are a gigantic Dana Carvey super fan and you want to hear him slowly understand what a podcast is <laughs> week by week, uh, uh, then you should probably just skip to one of the more modern episodes where he, uh, I just listened to one with John Lovitz, which was great. Um, you, you get a lot of, uh, of fun kind of behind the scenes elements of their relationship, including something that I feel like uh, would, would fit in very much with our, with our little crew here, which is apparently they have this running joke with each other that whenever something goes well for either of them in their careers, they'll just call each other and say like, happy now, happy now, <laughs> got everything you wanted, happy now, are you happy now? <laughs> like, oh, you made a bunch of money, happy now, very famous, happy now. Uh, Wait, that, that was Carby and who? Uh, uh, Lovitz. John Lovitz. John Lovitz. Lovitz. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Lovitz. Uh, That's funny. But, but just great... Um, uh, uh, great banter between the two of them. Uh, he he does Dana Carvey does the um does the podcast with his hairdresser, who apparently he's he's really good friends with. Uh, which I I didn't realize until after you know he was doing it that I'm like, oh, I guess he has always had really like styled hair. <laughs> uh, uh, you know. Anyway, uh, uh, it's great. Dana Carvey's great. He's uh, uh you know, uh, uh, I think a very a very funny guy, and I enjoy the podcast. Right on. Uh, I got I got a pick. Um, I've been I actually have two picks. Um, first off is a game. Uh, both of these are very similar, uh, but I just recently played uh, this version on um, uh, on the mobile phone. They have an iOS version of it. But uh, if anybody remembers Universal Paperclips, the uh, kind of the proto idle time management game, you uh, you click and make paper clips and then eventually you sell them and you use the money to buy machines that make the robots for you and it turns into this whole intergalactic conquest sort of situation <laughs> um that they have that on on ios now uh they've had it for a few years but it's only a couple bucks and what i like about it is that it is a game that you can complete i finished that game in seven hours it told me so uh that was it's an interesting experience because they don't make games like that like this style anymore you're not supposed to finish them you're supposed to keep doing them forever which is why i'm stuck in the rabbit hole right now of a new game called exponential idol which is um kind of like 
any like and like those clicker games but what is interesting about it is it has this meta narrative of you're a mathematician or a, a math student turn professor and you are uh working on this formula that does uh something <laughs> you're kind of not sure it makes money somehow um, and as you play you unlock more ways to uh to augment the the formula <laughs> And so, you know, you unlock new new variables and they add on to the formula and, uh, you know, you get to the point where you're not really measuring things by value. You're measuring them by how large the number is. You know, you're only <laughs> I, working in I scientific feel like notation. like labels aside, uh, your pick and my pick are almost identical. <laughs> like, it's yeah. kind of like, <laughs> yeah. do the thing to get to the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I I feel like Bryce's that somewhere these calculations are feeding into like a teal capital hedge fund and yeah. that they're crowdsourcing all of this stuff. And it's it, it's it's really neat. I've played a lot of games like these, and I think it's really interesting that this one is very upfront. Like this is the formula that you're working with. These are the various formulas we use to, you know, chart your growth, your acceleration and stuff. And you can there's even a really cool bit where you can like program it, say, hey, I want to prestige. Uh, when I hit this condition and you actually can program in a condition in in with logical operators and a lot of cool variables so you it, it is it's kind of heavy duty in terms of a time management game like this but I really dig it and I, I think it's it's really neat it's free uh, you can there's no ads on it you can pay a couple bucks to get a permanent boost but I, I think I think it's really cool I've been playing it for over a month now at least um, and I I think I've only got a little bit left to go. I think there is an, an end. <laughs> sorry, but sorry. It's called what? Again? Exponential Idol right. on uh, on iOS. Well, that's the last thing you need you is, is a, an infinite time sink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have uh, I'm do a little name dropping here. Um, uh, um, years ago, I had worked for Penn and Teller. And I worked on kind of was like their kind of a magic lackey that would help set up magic effects for them and would do things like when they were, they were doing a run of talk shows and I worked with them. And first one we did, I think, was Letterman, right? And my job is to go set stuff up on stage, to go set these props, put them in place, get everything ready, you know, run around, get make sure the magic's going to work, and then set them on stage. We're at the Letterman Theater, and this is like 1996 or something. And I'm... A producer grabs me before I'm about to go up there says, all right, here's what you have to understand. Don't talk to David. Don't look him in the eyes. I'm like, cool. And I'm like, I want to be like, I'm also a professional and I understand that. Yeah. But I didn't say that. I also want to say like, I've only heard that about wild animals and children with mental challenges. <laughs> but um, I didn't say any of that. Just yeah. nodded my head, go out there, set the stuff up. Do it, or do it, get everything ready when I'm just, just sneak away because I know that's Letterman, right? A few weeks later, we're at another talk show, Conan O'Brien. And uh, the experiences could not have been any different from like, I got to go on, I go on stage, I go on stage, I set it up, and Conan's like, hey, how you doing? Um, I'm cool, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> you know, I'm setting everything yeah. up like this, like, all right, cool. Walk away, he was friendly, cordial, I'm just, you know, the lackey for Penn and Teller setting this stuff up, and then, you know, later in the hallway, I'm standing there talking to Penn, Andy and Conan come up and talk, Andy Richter gave me gum, told this <laughs> hilarious story, <laughs> they were just the most chill, nice people that I, I, you know, that I've met that were, I've met a lot of fans, but like for level of fame and nice, they were just, they were just got cool guys. They were just super, cool guy. I remember like, Hey, you want some gum? Oh, thanks. And then he kind of was like, ah, oh, da, 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 da. And that stayed with me. Cause I remembered like, not everybody who gets to that level has to be, you know, the, uh, the, you know, the God King, you know, yeah. has to be the sun emperor has to be this, this is my domain. And you will, it was, you could be these chill guys and do this. So, um, I that 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 was really a positive experience for me. And I, you know, watched the last episodes Conan had did his final sign off from late night television. And so he had a week long different guests coming on there and going in. I say watch it for two for a couple of reasons. One is Conan has been, I think, consistently probably one of the funniest people there's ever done late night. If you really just watch through for it's not just some people get good writers in there, but a guy consistently you look at the stuff he comes up. I'm a big fan of Conan. 
He is a genuinely nice guy. Not just my experience, but genuinely a good guy. He is one of the really good guys. A lot of people are like, oh, I love this person on TV. I'm like, they're a monster. You know, <laughs> yeah. like those, you know, not saying that about Letterman, but I'm like, other people, like they're just people who are like, that person's a monster who you love, but Conan is not. Conan, Conan, super, super cool guy. Great guest. The data car. I don't know if you saw the Dana Carvey. No, he goes on there no data carvey goes out there and just pulls out like yellow legal pad and just does test some new bit out there and conan just digs into him like why are you testing a bit on my last shows you know that's um, hilarious bill bill Hader comes out and one of the things you realize is that conan and bill hang out and that conan treats bill as sort of his personal kind of entertaining monkey boy go do this bit go do this bit and then he has him he says do the one of the dying tauntaun <laughs> and, and 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 like he says i only asked you this once and Bill's like no you've actually asked me to do this multiple times so you realize like oh man like there might be like you know like calling, hey bill we're having a party come on up you're like ah, am i gonna have to do my bits you know but yeah. anyhow uh he does a dying tauntaun that is if Bill Bill Hader, I think, is probably the best impression because he is just Bill Hader's impressions, they're not they don't feel like a guy who's like, all right, they just burst out of him because yeah. he's just natural mimic. And you watch him do the dying don I'm like, he's the best. There is none better than Bill Hader. So uh that's that's that's, that's great. I mean, uh I, I was lamenting, I forget who had put up a thing on Twitter of just like that run of late 90s, early aughts Conan that was just legendary when he was still in, in late night. Uh, uh, the, the Walker, Texas Ranger lever. Oh, that's right. Yeah, like, when, when, when the NBC had the rights to all that stuff. Had the right and, to yeah. it. And it was just like the idea of let's just play out of context, but totally serious. There was never a bit like tagging on it. It was just weirdness from like out of context. Walker, Texas Ranger was just next level. Like, and, and, and you look at kind of where we've, where we went since with like clip based stuff or YouTube or let's react like kind of things. And, and there was just an element that he was always one step ahead of the game. Uh, uh, uh you know, Look, it's not like he moving into this realm of content creation as he's also built a podcast empire for himself. Like we are going to be uh, uh, bereft of 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 Conan, but uh, God, maybe maybe the last greatest practitioner of that specific art, which is is kind of fading into this this weird new realm of of, of late night television. Because you look at like early, early 80s Letterman, great bits that came out of the top 10 list, Monkey Cam, all that. There was just that great, super creative because he went into the medium and he did something different. Conan did that. But I think when he got the you know, problem was that he was a point at, at the time when people got a lot more. You, he wasn't given enough time to sort of grow, I think, in other ways. But uh, he I can't I'm like name like a great routine or bit from anybody since then. Like, where's the news? And I, they, there'll be like. You know, people have their bits and stuff, but things that we like people, we, we mentioned this and we get in the year 2000. That was a bit in the mid 90s. Yeah. You know, in the year 2000, you know, and it still goes your head. It's 25 years ago. It's 25 years ago. And oh, God. Yeah. And pe people were pointing out the, the Robert Smigel bits with yeah. the, 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 the celebrity interviews where it was just Robert Smigel doing the impressions with, uh, yeah. you know, with, with, with the cutouts or whatever. I mean, just, oh God, so funny, so funny. And, and, uh, uh, not to mention he's just a great interviewer. Like he, yeah. he is, uh, you know, naturally just, just one of the funniest people and how he got that job is hilarious. The fact that he was, uh, a, a basically supposed to be a sacrificial lamb waiting for Gary Shandling to take that time slot, um, is is just such a such a fantastic story a, a tremendous overachiever and and he deserves uh all all the credit not to mention the fact that like you know look when when he had that whole situation with jay leno uh that was i mean to me the last most give relevant people context moment. on that what was that give people a little context on that oh i mean for those of you who are not aware jay leno retires uh conan o'brien gets the tonight show 
and then because you know uh, uh as as we can now safely determine Conan was not the impetus of late night ratings, you know, uh, going down. That is something that was happening no matter what. But NBC gets panicked uh, and takes Conan off and replaces him again with Jay Leno before Jimmy Fallon gets the job. Uh, but but yeah, that was those last few weeks were electric. His he toured. We we went to go see him. I think me, you, uh, and and Katie Dirks, right? Uh, Andrew went to go see him in in L.A. Yeah, uh, you know it was it was a uh, a uh, uh, you know just just an amazing moment in time. And aside from uh, Letterman retiring, to me, it's probably those shows were the most iconic moments in late night over the past you know thirty years. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, yeah, it's not like he's dead, but it is. No. The, you know, oh, whoa, is Conan? Uh, no, but he's just a, he's a great guy that watching him. Oh, he's leaving late night. Like we'll see where he comes back with. Like just to stop and appreciate him. What a what what a great talent. He he he, um, he deserves to work once a week. <laughs> I think yeah. he is he has done <laughs> enough uh, uh, working every night. They do. Uh, they have guest bits, including he has Homer Simpson as a guest. They do have a guest bit with, with Homer Simpson doing interview. that. And, yeah. Yeah, the exit interview. Yeah, that's funny. So it's jokes. They're funny. Oh my jokes. god, like that's another great Conan bit. The secrets bit. <laughs> the secrets. <laughs> uh, all right, gentlemen. It's been weird. All righty. Yo. Hello. What do we want to do for after things? Uh, I could do a little more VR. Did you see this thing unplugged? Mm -mm. Uh, no. Was that the thing that you sent us? The, the, the YouTube video, the VR showcase or. No, this is a, this is a game that's coming out. That's basically rock band, but letting you air a guitar, a guitar in VR. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, we can, we can talk about that. Sure. Um, yeah, we launched the last episode of of uh, World's Greatest Con too. So if we want to do any, I don't, I don't know how much you guys talked about it. I don't last think week. we have time. I don't think we have <laughs> yeah. time for that. It's really not that kind of show, Justin. Oh, okay. That's yeah. No. Okay. Sure. Let's talk <laughs> about. Let's talk about your VR video. <laughs> uh, A little self promoting here. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you notice my books over my shoulder here. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we'll do after things here, so if you need a break, uh, now's the time to do it. Hey, J-Man. What's up, dog? How you doing? So I, I, How you living, son? Oh, you know. Uh, I'm trying, trying, to, trying to get back into working out more. I went to the gym today, mm -hmm. and they were cleaning it. Oh. Uh, it was, it's not like a Gold's Gym or a big friend. It's, my apartment has a fitness room. I guess. Got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so they they were some some cleaning folk in there while I was gonna go in and hit the treadmill and okay. um, uh, and I felt very weird using it if they were in there cleaning so I ended up doing an outdoors run. I'll tell I'll tell you this. Uh -huh. Two two things happened. So yesterday I had done the speed intervals on the treadmill. Yep. Did pretty well. Yep. Uh, today what I did. Were your, what were your, what were your intervals? What were you doing? Uh, One two. To start off with, uh, this treadmill only does one and one, one minute on, one minute off. One minute on, one and off. And I ended up, and that's and that's programmatic. Yeah, like, you can. Okay, you can. That's set. good because I would, I would, uh, 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 I would do it just with like my watch. Right. You know, I would set like a timer and and do that, which is a little cumbersome. It is, or like um, I, I use the the C twenty five K, the couch to yeah, the couch, couch to five K, yeah, and um, that's all right, but they're kind of cagey about how you get your music and how they give you audio cues. So I didn't really like that. So I did a little under like a half, um, un under a mile and a half yesterday. Today, uh, almost did two miles, 1.82 miles nice. outdoors, but less calories because I, because without the treadmill, I'm not pacing myself. And so I'm going a little too fast, a little too hard. And so I, know, I was only I, running for. I would say less than this is the problem with our quantifiable self is that uh, oftentimes we get a lot of data and and uh, I think it's tough for us to know when we should and shouldn't pay attention to it. Mm -hmm. I would say for you, 
the only data that matters is consecutive days you're doing it. Yeah. Like if, if well, and uh, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, like that, if you can get that streak up, if, if every time you're like just going out and getting a mile somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, either on the treadmill or you're getting out like that, that to me is like, then once you've got like a week, two weeks worth of data, then you can start to look at it. Cause what I've found in, in the various times that I've kind of fallen out of running and then got back into it mm -hmm. is that your first two months are so much growth. Like you're, 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 you're constantly figuring out what you can do as you get, as you build up your, your, um, endurance, like yeah. where you can push yourself, where you can't, what time of day you're doing it, when you're eating, when you're not like, there's just so much that kind of goes into it that, uh, uh, I, I, I wouldn't pick apart numbers. Oh, sure. Right oh, now. sure. Yeah. Uh, oh, hello, Andrew. All right. Is my AC too loud? We, we can hear it. And it's I'll just suck. <laughs> it's just okay. Sweat um, it out. So I'm I'm kind of using you know I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of going back and forth between trying to trying to do the treadmill, and trying to trying to do the speed intervals so I can work on that endurance, and 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 alternating it with weight training a couple of different weight training um, days. I mean you're really you're doing kind of. What, what I've found is you're really kind of doing two different things, right? Like, oh, for it, sure. And and it's like, uh, uh, that's fine. It can all fit into one regimen. Mm -hmm. Well, right? I, I, I need that, especially as I get back into it, especially the weight training stuff, because I can just about get to where I, where, you know, what, my, what level I was at last year. But uh, in terms of just pain management, like if I do an arm day and then it hurts for a whole week, I need to be able to mix in cardio i just yeah. need to have something else in there so that's that's the only reason otherwise that's i would do just a monday Wednesday, wednesday friday weight thing but um i, I want to get some cardio in. well i mean it really just depends on what you want you know like uh uh you if, if at the end of the day everything's holistic right mm -hmm. like there's calorie burn there's diet Deficit. And then there's, you know, uh, uh, if you're weight training, then you, you should have specific goals of exactly, you know, what you want, what you want to build for, and then uh, uh, figure it out from there. But uh, I, I don't know. Uh, to me, cardio running is just great because it it's a thing that I can just do. And the further I run from my house, the more I have to run back. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it, it's it's psychologically, it kind of fits with my brain as a, as a way to burn calories and, and kind of set my set my day up for yeah. success but uh I, I think ultimately that's that's where you want to go is find something fitness wise that just fits in with where either goals that you have like i know andrew you've gone through uh, uh stuff where you know either for you know a, a, a tv or, or 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 other reasons you just wanted to say all right here i'm getting to this I'm getting to this weight number. I'm I'm looking to get this kind of physique, and mm. you go hard at it, and and now you've got a a a place to uh, a place to work toward, or you know if you got a weight goal or something. I I do think having like hard metrics there, and then also figuring out where it fits into the rest of your life is is really that's that's the thing that makes it keep going. Is is when you figure out okay, this is what I do every every day uh, to get to that place. That the hard part for me is if you said in five weeks you need to be in X shape, you know, that's it's when the realm of out great. Mm -hmm. If you said now you gotta change your patterns for the rest of your life, <laughs> yeah. I'm and, no good. And, I'm and, no good. And that's where I'm at right now. So like like Coats from Home said, you know, if you're hurting that much, you're doing too much and you need to start light. But but I'm this is not me starting brand new fresh. It's just I didn't hadn't really done it the past uh fifteen months. Uh, because a little a little COVID, a little thing called COVID happened, and so I w I went back to because the app that I use it keeps track of what your last sets were. So I was trying to keep yeah. up with where I was, knowing that that was probably too much. Um, but I I'm I'm fine. With well, but this is this is what uh, you know. I always get, uh, a constant fight with my with my wife is whenever she gets into running, she over runs mm -hmm. the first day. And she tries to run way too fast, way too hard, and then her legs hurt for a week, and then she doesn't run again. Which is why that treadmill with the built-in intervals is great. It, yes. That's exactly what I need. Like, the 30 minutes I did yesterday of that 
like, uh, I, I could have kept going another 30 minutes, whereas today I wore myself out after like 15 minutes and I had to keep finding segments to run because my legs were hurting, but my heart rate wasn't getting back up. So yeah, it's, um, it's just, um, it's getting back into the space. I'll figure out a goal soon, but just like when I lost my watch, I lost my watch last week for uh, almost 24 hours. And part of, part of me feeling okay with it was like, well, you know, I mean, I'm using it to track stuff, but I think I'm at a point where I know enough things where I could just go and do something yeah. and know that I did my stuff. Yeah. Um, I did, I did enough stuff. Do you need a break, Jamie? No. No? Where did Brian go? Brian vanished. Vanished into thin air. The perfect, the perfect trick. The perfect crime. <laughs> uh, by the way, programming tomorrow, uh, tonight, uh, Cord Killers is at uh, 6 Central with Ayaz Akhtar. Finally! Oh. Finally we've got him. Oh. Uh, I, now I've, I'm sure I've jinxed myself. Every, every time we've we've meant to have Ayaz on the, the past like two months, he's had a last minute emergency and had to cancel. So That's so, such a cool name. Yeah. It's a great name. I love Ayaz. Ayaz. Um, and then uh, tomorrow, great night. Tomorrow, the begins. debut of Great Night. Right, six. I think that's also six p.m. Central now for for the pre-show. For, for the pre-show, pre yeah. Uh, so that's two well, two, two hours earlier, everybody. Two hours earlier. Yes. Yeah. Six, six p.m. Central. Tomorrow, please join us. Because yeah, because normally pre-show would start at yeah, nine yeah. Eastern time. Yes. Right. So it starts at seven Eastern, Eastern, Eastern time Eastern. now. That's it. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's a little earlier. So uh, uh, West Coast people uh, hate it, and East Coast people will be able to watch us again. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Which is, uh, sorry, West Coast, but there's more people that live in the East Coast, so I'm going to lose out. All right, you guys want to do some after things? Ready. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. All right, Andrew, I'm going to count you in. In three, two. Hello and welcome to After Things. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Brian Brushwood. Ahoy! Justin Robert Young. Hello. And Bryce Castillo. Hello. Also, I'm on Team hey, Hello. Um, so, uh, you guys did a thing, and I don't think we've all talked about the thing together like this. No. Yeah, I guess not. Um, uh, especially today being the day that we finally... Hmm. I I mean it's not over, but 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 we put an end cap on uh, an end cap on chapter one of it for sure. Yeah. So World's Greatest Con available now. All four episodes of our four episode first season are out. There will be a little epilogue that'll come out uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, but if you want the scripted stuff that we have spent the last uh, seven months working on, uh, uh, it is all there for you now. Um, this this is the part where after years and years of giving advice, we have to fall flat on our faces and be proven wrong about everything, right? <laughs> like 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 sitting on our mountain telling people well what you ought to do and here's how to do it, and then we launch something new and now it's just like well I don't know did we do it right? Well, no, <laughs> but but it's not like you you guys <laughs> didn't use all of the tools that we talk about every week. You know, oh, you I didn't know. email. Th 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 this is where we have to find out whether or not <laughs> whether or not we're falling on our it, face or not. If we if this was not. a cult. What? If this was a cult, and this is not a cult, anybody <laughs> listening, FBI, um, this is where you, hey, guys, we've got the new tech. Yeah. <laughs> the old tech served its period, but the old tech's gone. That's right. It's new tech. We're going to talk about the new tech. We're going to tell you about the new tech. Uh, and you got to buy at, the new tech. At this at this very moment, uh, in Pocket Casts, it's still the number one top trending podcast. Um, they don't separate in the region, so we get to at least imagine that it's worldwide on Pocket Casts. Um, the reviews seem good. Uh, the growth seems organic, and uh, downloads are downloads are, are stellar so far, uh, which is which is great. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, uh, I don't know how much you guys went over uh, last week, but uh, this was a, uh, a a real kind of melding of a lot of the experience that we've had in the podcasting world. Uh, Brian uh, did a fantastic job in leveraging uh, the Mono Rogue audience. We Got a, a huge, huge, huge help uh, from legends in this field, qualified people who already speak to the qualified audience that would enjoy this show the most in Jack Resider of Darknet Diaries, 
and of course the 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 greatest of all time, the greatest to ever do it, Dan Carlin with Hardcore History. Uh, Dan uh, Carlin gave us a uh, a tweet of endorsement, and Jack Resider was nice enough to put the whole first episode in the Darknet Diaries feed with a little uh, endorsement in front of it. Uh, both of which were done gratis. You know that was that was those were friend moves from friends of of Brian and. Uh, uh, so far, so good. You know, the, 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 the downloads are enough that, you know, uh, we've really had to kind of rethink, uh, exactly what the cadence of this show <laughs> how, is going to be. fast we want to get back to doing this again, because I can't believe it's, it's, it's only been two weeks and two days. Is that, is that uh, two weeks in one day? Is, is that how short it's been? The spirits, they did it all in one night. Is it three? Because you had the first two episodes come out week one. That's right. And now we're on week three with episode four. And then one week later four. was episode three. And then one week later yeah. was episode two four. Weeks. So two weeks. Two weeks and a, a well, couple of days. All right. Yeah. No, no, no. It's yeah. two weeks. Yeah. I, 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 it's bonkers. That's it was, so It was insane. Monday night. So it was actually just a, even a little shy of two weeks. Uh, but we wanted to launch two of them. Uh, uh, mostly because uh, I mean, as soon as we got the Darknet Diaries placement, we knew we wanted to watch launch two of them so people could have a thing to go and subscribe to. Right. Uh, as soon as they heard the the first one, and then you know, once you launch that, then it's not like you're gonna wait two weeks and then launch this uh, uh the other one. So it ha- all had to kind of uh, uh rock and roll really fast. But uh, and, and keep in mind all of this is happening while Justin is moving and we're on hiatus <laughs> from from our regular Tuesday night jam of night attack. And while we're writing, as a matter of fact, I just saw a piece of equipment that just showed up that was uh, that uh, is fairly significant for for uh the long great, great night, night tomorrow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's just been so much uh, at a different time, uh, there would have been a fragility that I I, I don't think uh, 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 the three of us, the four of us could be handling. But it's really great to be in a place where it's just like, yeah, no, uh, 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 let's keep on rolling. Who's fragile? Who are you calling fragile? I'm me, not fragile. Me, me, mainly me, but <laughs> but 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 uh, I, I, I'm trying to spread around the fragility. Uh yeah, it's been, I mean, if we're being real, I've never had a success like this. Uh, I know Brian has launched, uh, you know, two brands with a, a scam school and then Modern Rogue, where things found an audience fairly uh, uh, quickly and, and it was able to kind of grow at this steady pace. Uh, and and obviously, Night Attack and NSFW show have been a tremendous success, but it's been very much in the in the in the cult. Our our, our greatest successes have been because uh, how agile and amazing we are as as a as a as a smaller unit, you know. And by uh, we, he means the community, the not, community, not, not the two of us. No, no. I mean, uh, uh, that's that's what's been remarkable about it. But in terms of number, 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 numbers. Uh, you know, I've never been a part of anything uh, at this level, and and it's it's been very exciting uh, uh, to do it. Um, so I, I I would like to thank everybody for being a part of it, and and uh, it's been it's been it's been awesome, and I I'm very excited to uh, 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 disappoint you with subsequent seasons. <laughs> <laughs> I want to really express my curiosity with the California highway system and i do season two and that was the true detective season two is the whole oh really you know, yeah i was gonna say yeah, yeah. or or it's like we're gonna do, you know, talk, talk, talk about the dismantling of the red line or whatever yeah we're talk, yeah talk about the taliban like serial did uh you know just to just to totally throw everybody off the you know case that of anything that was good about season one. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that we, we, we've got a few ideas for season two that will be a bit of a departure because we don't want to be pigeonholed into being a world war two history show. Um, or even a history show in general. I mean, we're going to tell stories from history, but from the we past. don't want to be a, we're not going to tell, yeah, yeah. we're not going to tell stories of things that have happened in the future, yeah. but all right, listen up team next Thursday, we strike. <laughs> uh, but it's, um, you know, it's it's been it's been a, 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 a tremendous experience. I've learned a lot as a producer, and uh, 
it's what what's been remarkable about it is how much the show has retained i think the the essence of what we wanted uh it to be from the beginning to what was translated like the 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 feedback that we were getting was kind of exactly the feedback we wanted which is which to me has been uh has been what's what's amazing cuz you i think you oftentimes can sink yourself if you've got too much of a pre-programmed idea of how things are going to be received and, and if they're not, and if people like another thing about it, then maybe you don't react to it as well as you should. And you don't appreciate the blessing of people connecting on any level to it. Uh, but this has been remarkable in that, like, like, Oh, people really like the production. Cool. People really like the vulnerability of Brian. Cool. People really like the history part. Cool. People uh, like, I think that this is a fascinating story. Like, Wow. All if I were to list out the reasons why the show is cool, like people have seemed to pick up on that. And that I think is something that's it's easier said. But when you when you create things for a living, you know that that's very rarely the case. Very rarely does everything you're going many, for. Many, get many, many good things uh, do not become successful and many successful things are garbage uh, to have created a good thing that seems to be enjoying some success is an unexpected delight, especially when it, it vindicates uh, so much of the, the the theories that we've had about like, you know, what the right way to launch things are. So <clears throat> producer Justin, just between you and me, yeah. um, how much of a diva is Brian Brushwood? <laughs> uh, you know, the funniest thing about Brian is that the biggest thing we had to, I had to, I had to beat out of him is his self-depreciation because uh you know if he's on scam school and he screws up it's really funny if he looks in the camera and says look at me the guy who screwed up modern rogue even more so that's like almost a a, a baked in part of it is like oops we poured too much uh, thing in the other stuff and that's why everything got messy right uh and so, why are we literally going against the instructions because that's what we do who cares whatever yeah yeah uh, and so uh, when we would record, especially through the first few episodes, there were moments where I think Brian's natural instinct was to pull back and be like, well, well, what do I know? I'm just an idiot. And I had, at a certain point just had to start stopping the takes and, and yelling at him because uh, this is a, I think Brian's built to tell stories about con, cons and scams. Uh, he is an authority on it. And especially in this realm, you know, if, if kind of form equals function, then the self-depreciation that plays so well on Scam Nation, that plays so well on the modern rogue, takes away in a podcast like this because it, it almost challenges the listener of, like, now you feel like an idiot for for being there. For investing, for investing. in this guy. Wait, you're not what, going what on you're a, a fraud? Yeah, you're not going on a journey you are um you are trying to uh uh you know uh, you're just being told a story and that's and that's a fundamental difference and i think it took us a little bit to make sure that we that we got there uh but i i i think the final product shows that you know brian is is a more than capable um storyteller in in that in that realm uh you know i cuz i don't think that there's there's anything that involves that subject matter that, that he can't uh, he can't get across. I, I, I don't know if we discussed this on the air on this program yet, but um, I was telling Justin how thankful I am that I'm old now because um, I, I picture, I think I was 31 when we launched Scam School. And if Scam School launched with the character that is portrayed in World's Greatest Con of, of somebody leaning back with a half-empty pint saying unironically the phrase, there's a line in my line of work called, you know, if you can't con an honest John. It's like, I, 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 I would want to slap whoever that was. It's like, what, what have you been in this line of work for all of five years? Uh, but, but as I creep up on 50, that stuff becomes more credible and becomes better for it. And it, it allows me to, I don't know, play a character that I've never really played before, a, a genuine authority. Well, okay, Brian. Just between you and me, your producer of the show has gone on the record telling people that you're a bit of a 
as an artist, sometimes uh, self-critical or overly self-critical. We've also heard, in fact, he's admitted as much to yelling at you during the production of that. Yeah. What was the experience like for you working under a tyrant? Bliss. <laughs> it was absolute bliss. To be the instrument. He'll never hear this. This is anonymous. Yeah, so, exactly. so I'm glad, I'm glad to hear all, that. Yeah, I'm out of here. I'm leaving. Stomp, 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 stomp. Clock. <laughs> well, uh, no, uh, it, it, it's as though, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I've been used as an instrument on various projects. Brian you know. has been used. <laughs> uh, and some people have tried to, you know, wedge me into their preconceived Brian notions. Brian has been, people have tried to wedge Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Do not urban dictionary that. But 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 uh but when Justin lays stuff out like you know his ability to give me permission to run off on you know side tangents or whatever and then maybe there's something there maybe there's not but then eventually just gently guide me back um it's uh it, it, I, I i i now know what it feels like to be yo-yo ma's cello uh and to, to be played <laughs> to perfection <laughs> justin played with me <laughs> oh until my fingers bled uh, <laughs> uh, but 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 in all seriousness there there's kind of a level of trust where it's like we both understood where we wanted to get to and then when i would deviate from the script justin was really really good at at recognizing when i just needed to get you know the wiggles out of my system and when i had something different to say or whatever and 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 that's not a luxury i've been afforded in a lot of other projects and and in that regard it's it, it truly has been incredible I, there's I, Go ahead. Oh, please. No, go ahead. No, you can have a better anecdote than I was. Oh, I, I no, I, I just want to say that uh, uh, it is, so it is, I'm it is great, very flattering. Right? I'm it is just very, it is very flattering to say oh. that, that right, Brian anyhow, is. That... As I, I, I watched, uh, I am a, I'm a huge Quentin Tarantino fan, and I don't love everything he does. Some things I don't have, and when he does something great, I love, 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 love it, and like, once upon a time in Hollywood, I think is like just a great culmination of what he knows. And he, there's a book coming out. You know, he wrote that he wrote his own novelization of that. Oh, which really? Like comes out once today upon or a time tomorrow. in Hollywood. Yeah, uh, it features yeah. Uh, 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 Margot Robbie's feet right on the cover. Oh, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, and it's like read by like, Jennifer Jason Lee, I think. Oh, but, really? Uh, and, for the audio. Anyhow, um, I watching these interviews of Tarant of people talk actors like big name actors talking about working on Tarantino. And one of the things like Kurt Russell talked about, like, uh, no cell phones on the set. Cause he's like, when Quentin Tarantino's in movie land, you're in movie land. You're yeah. going to be around, you're going to be making movies. That's what you're going to be doing. Uh, listen to, uh, Channing Tatum talk about like, yeah, like it's funny. Like everybody becomes this movie nerd when you're on a Quentin set. And it's just, and he talked about like how just geeked out everybody is about making stuff. And then there was the, when Jamie Foxx talks about when he went to the table read for, for Django. And he does this great impression of when you like he starts it and like then Quentin pulls him aside <laughs> and he's like, ah, ah, I was afraid this is gonna happen, you know. <laughs> and he just you know and just like him getting notes from like hard notes from Quentin and and it was like he's talking to the Howard Stern show. It's like what's he's like he's just I love it. It was great because like it's like they're all like they when you go make a Tarantino movie, you want to make a Tarantino movie. You yeah. know, you show up there to be in his movie. And I think that's the power of him as a director. You hear about other directors and people who have difficult times with actors and stuff because well, what's your movie? What's your style? Do you really know what you're doing? Have you earned that? And, you know, you you get a guy like Tarantino is like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. De Niro, if you don't want to be in my movie, fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're not in it. And who is who is whose loss is it? So I would say between the two of you is like, like Justin's earned that trust because, you know, and that's what I, as a writer, when I worked with Justin was that I, I, I trusted him. I trusted his guidance. I trusted his input on stuff because I knew, you know, we're, you know, we could walk, we could have this, we could walk into a movie a thousand miles apart and 80% of our opinions of what we're going to say are going to be very similar because we see things in a different way. But that 20% that he sees differently is going to make me go, Oh, wow. Oh, that's something different. I didn't think about and that's, you know, trust, but also knowing I can't predict the really cool part that's going to come out of his head. Uh, well, you know, I think it helps um, 
it helps working with people that are really good. You know, I, I really do love collaboration. Um, and, and I love being able to bring something to it. It was, uh, you know, a process through, you know, two seasons of raise the dead and, uh, feature story and, uh, uh, trying to step up, uh, the production value on, uh, politics, 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 but like, everything that I've kind of done over the last few years on some way or another has been kind of leading up to, uh, leading up to doing stuff like this, where I'm able to work with someone like Brian, who I respect tremendously and I don't want to waste his time. Um, and, and to be quite frank from the very beginning, you know, I, I kind of knew that this stuff has to be good <laughs> or else like, Brian, it's not like Brian's sitting around with a lot of free time, you know, uh, uh, you know, doing doing jack squat. Like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of mouths to feed, both uh, uh, literally and figuratively around here. Uh, so it's like you, you got to go and, and produce. And I, I felt like we had we had done enough early on that we were able to kind of as soon as the the proof started coming out. That it's like, oh, OK, well, there's there, there's something here, but ultimately it's like. Uh, there is an art to collaboration and, and I've been just so lucky to be able to work with my best friends and, and be able but, to do it in a way that hasn't ruined our relationships. But and like, Brian, like you, like, I think a problem that you have is when you're really good at a lot of different things, when you work on a thing, it's like, how much, where do I throw a hundred percent of my energy into? And I think that I think that's kind of what, what's cool here is when you collaborate with Justin or here is then you could say, okay, I get it. Tell me to make this the because like you know when you make a show when you make your other stuff you've got to write, produce, do a bunch of other stuff. But when here you could say, okay, I mean, is that bit was that kind of the experience here? Is you're gonna say, okay, cool, I got to put a thousand percent into the one a couple areas instead of having to do everything? Oh my God, yes, a hundred percent. Because um, there 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 was bliss and freedom in the fact that Justin would hand me. Uh, 1.0 of the script and remind me that uh, hey uh, just go because uh, we need we need something to start with and then we'll figure out what's wrong um, uh, we've talked about this before but uh, the idea of hate listening to your own stuff it's like it's it, it, it sounds crass but really what it boils down to is you you keep whittling away everything that's not the right project and the only way to get there is by doing it and then and then listening to it and just listening for uh you don't have to listen for what's right just listen for what's wrong and you'll know it when you hear it uh mark that try something else and maybe that won't be right either but but that whittling process led us to some surprising um symmetries over the the four episodes of this story uh, there's stuff that we did not set out on episode one to set up themes that eventually would pay off on episode four but they're there and they're there because of that constant constant iterative process i mean and then once you figure them out you can go back and add the add the nod in episode one sure, that we sure, realize sure pays off in episode four now but but a lot of that is um you know, uh, uh, a lot of the lessons that I learned with Andrew, to be honest, like in terms of uh, uh, being, you know, in, in your creative process, the best thing you can do when you're trying to find your story is A, look for a story. <laughs> know that when you're walking into it, uh, uh, the, the, the question is, you know, what is the story here? What is the beginning? What is the middle? What is the end? Where do we begin? What is the journey? What is the result? Uh, uh, and that's what I constantly, that's what I looked, that was the goal when I was writing a draft. It was the goal in, when I was listening to it was like, what do I natu what am I naturally gravitating toward? Uh, what do I want more of? What do I want less of? Uh, and, and, and that, you know, is something where, yeah, and something else that I learned from, from Andrew's process is just like, God, you can't, you you can't give yourself more freedom to tear down and rebuild at that like 25% mark like when you're when you're like 25% through you've got to draft and like you've got to give yourself the permission to just be brutal and like rip out certain ideas and just say like what if we made it all about this like what if these things work better than these other things that i had in my head 
And if there is any kind of process that I can say that is kind of philosophically I'm, I'm, subs- I'm subscribed to is uh, allowing that to be the defining creative period of, of, of the project or the episode, because at that point, then you're just refining. As soon as you're like, oh, okay, let's put, this was my initial idea. I was half right, but let's not, let's not be precious. Let's not try to defend it. Let's not get your ego involved on like, uh, uh, oh, but that was a good idea and I really want it to be that. Like, no, take it all out, rewrite it, restructure it, and, and then let's go forward and, and start to you know, refine, 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 refine. And, and, and I think it's the reason why Andrew's able to write so well, uh, especially at the kind of pace you write at. It's been inspiring. And, uh, uh, you know, this whole project took seven months. But uh, at this point, I think, you know, when we go into, you know, whatever we go uh, past this, it's going to go a lot faster because we just know what the process is at this point. And... And a key ingredient too is not telling Bryce, right? Was keeping it from Bryce. <laughs> I think Bryce, Bryce, <laughs> Bryce showed extreme restraint. Uh, I was, I was shocked and appalled at our own behavior when we found out that Bryce was like, "Yeah, I literally don't know what this thing is you've been yeah. doing for months." You, you would keep saying, "Oh yeah, I'm reco- I just recorded a new world's greatest con with with Justin." I, was like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> you forgot the part where you were going to tell anybody about the thing you're doing. That was well, all. That was all because I was terrified. Of yeah, Justin. partly because that was the other thing. There was oh, two things that I had to beat what? out of Brian. Uh, self-depreciating during recording and talking to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell me. Yeah, he already no, was I, telling no, me. No, 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 definitely I know that. Now we, I know that now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, blue harvest. We're gonna blue harvest. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and and part of that was just being able to uh, give everybody a fun surprise, give everybody something that was fully formed and fully cooked and ready for people to appreciate uh that is different because that's the other thing is that like even for our for the 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 community for which we serve and we have been pumping out content now for over a decade uh they don't know us for this so it has to feel different i I, I mean if we were just building it and like joking about like writing and 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 playing outtakes of world's greatest con for the last seven months on night attack i think it would be less than what we wanted to in terms of the grandiosity of it that that was the hard part was if we had done it that way when we did release it would be um i'm i'm not going to say it would be tepid or or uh, you know get like a dead cat bounce or whatever but it 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 would it would not be the same as we got a thing we're not going to say anything about it yeah. until you get it and then and then uh, there, as as a wise man once told me, the internet smells effort, and they could tell that a lot of effort went into this. <laughs> but not to say that there wasn't stuff I wanted to put out on Night Attack, including the supercut of Brian Adolf Hitler. <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian repeating, look, when you do a story about World War II, you're going to say the word Adolf Hitler a lot. And Brian said the word Adolf Hitler a lot, and so I just supercutted all of the <laughs> utterances of Adolf Hitler to the tune of the Mr. Belvedere theme song. <laughs> And it's like, that's something that would have been really, really funny to just out of context play on night attack. But also it's like, I don't know. I, I, I just love, uh, uh, creators who are carving out different paths and, and have the range and can do a funny comedy thing, but then also do something that's more serious. And, and look, you know, episode two of world's greatest con is the most vulnerable art that I've ever been close to or a part of. And it's because Brian surprised me in the moment in, in wanting to talk about things that, you know, I know as a friend were raw and painful. And, uh, uh, then it was up to me to try and polish it and make it, you know, uh, consumable. Uh, that's, that's something that I, I I think is outside of the wheelhouse of you know the the you just got you just lost to Hitler's dice guys um, <laughs> from the team that brought you yeah, yeah. the Hitler's dice game Hitler's comes. haunted dice comes world's greatest god which you know it is but but in the same way that you know from the director of Meet the Feebles comes Lord of the Rings like you know <laughs> yeah. it, it, you can exactly the exact that was exactly the example in my head or like Taika Waititi. You yeah. know, coming from what he did to Thor the, Ragnarok or whatever, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, and you look at 
you know, what he was doing is, you know, his, his story, like him and Jermaine Clement, I just love their story because it was like, they're in New Zealand, they want to make plays, the local theater playhouse won't let them do their plays, so they just rent out a place and do plays. Like, yeah, let's do movies. Want to do movies? Nobody wants, you know, they have their fans. They're like, ah, oh. then they go like, what we do in shadows. And then it's everybody around them didn't want what they wanted, but the world wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. Just. I, I think that you touched upon this too, is that like the, and Brian, you mentioned that the smelling effort and the, there is getting, having information that helps you make your thing better is great early on trying to get approval early on is the worst thing and people confuse the two people often confuse the two is like i'm gonna send this out because i want encouragement yeah and it's like oh well you could do this 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 no i wanted encouragement you did not give me encouragement and now i'm not gonna finish it because you tell me it sucks and so i'm never gonna and that's the problem where like here you add enough confidence to think about your own pattern to make things better and your own internal loop. And then you get this fully formed thing and not like, ah, let's do one and see if people like it and then decide if we'll do another. Uh, I will say that from the beginning, we began with the I, I, ending I, Also, I will say that if this flopped, we would not be doing a season two. So there is there is a little bit oh, of no, that. No, no, no. But, 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 but there was no half measures on just trying out episode one and seeing oh, hell where no. it went. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like we no, no. Began, we, we were like, going like, to tell a story. Like, yeah. and, and, and I think I mentioned to this uh, off, off camera at one point, Andrew. It's like, uh, I, I, I don't know. I have yet to experience what it's like to finish a novel, but I feel like this is the closest I've ever experienced to that, that, you know, it's like, uh, the, uh, the called shot, the complete story, the filling in the gaps, the revisions, and then it's like, and it's done and it's complete and whatever else happens, this is a full unit of story that, 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 that we got to create. Uh, it, it, it's a first for me that I haven't gotten to experience before. Well, I'll say that, there's sometimes you write, you hear people say things and then you experience them or then you do things. And then later on you hear people say something that you find out was a known thing you didn't know. And you go like in writing, you don't finish a book, you abandon a book. <laughs> you know. That's, yeah. And sometimes it's a complete stage and it's published and it's on shelves, but I always feel like I abandoned it. So I don't know if I've ever felt a sense of completion, but I know what you're saying. Well, but, but, but I guess, I guess, um, I believe every other creative, anything I've ever done with the exception of, I don't know, maybe the, uh, the professional's guide to fire eating, what w- never felt like there was an end point for it. They were all open-ended designed to go forever and ever and ever. Mm-hmm. And some got renewed and some did not, you know, yeah. like, like, like hacking the system was not launched with the intention of, and that's it. They yeah. did 12 episodes and now they they got all the hacks yes. you know the system it's, has been repaired exactly, thanks boys exactly right whereas whereas this is the first thing that i've ever and, and we certainly want to do more seasons but but this is a complete unit of story that i'm very very proud of it could live and, alone if yeah. it if, if 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 we if we so desired it it could be something that is uh you know just in and of itself uh, uh a, a a project and uh, it, it stands alone. It's got its own story, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't know, man. It, it's it's <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but like, um, it just still feels weird that it's a success. Like, because uh, there's, and, there's and, been and, so and much of launching this kind of stuff for me for, for either of us is, to to say a su- success. Uh, there's a pretty like you and I are pretty good at figuring out like. Well, it seems like a coulda, buda, 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 buda. but like, there's none of that. It's like both of us are like, yeah, that was a success, wasn't it? <laughs> well, and to be to be totally honest, we're gonna get into the creator's mindset. It's like the biggest things that I've had to do over the last few weeks is just beat the beat the loser out of me, like because uh, I I kind of kept having these uh, feelings of like, oh well, this is when the bottom falls out, and this is when everything comes crashing down and this is when uh, uh, this happens. And it's like, uh, and it's because I've launched stuff in the past and you know, it's had all, all success, right? It's had a, a little moment and then it kind of went away. Right. And, and there's that uh, regression to the mean. Well, always. yeah, I, I think it, look, it, it's, I love making stuff for our community. 
and it's it's amazing. It's my life's work. I continue to do it. And and if all we ever did was that, then it would be fine. But when you try to do things that will, will reach a new audience, uh, uh, if if you don't, you know, uh, you know, I I love in in our modern world of like TikTok, there is this kind of like codification of this thing flops, right? And and that's now no longer like a television show or a movie or something like that. Now it's like my my discussion of whether or not I should clean my room is it going to flop or not? <laughs> and it's like the the fact that this has continued to grow is new and it's emotionally been something where I've had to process. I've had to allow like, oh, no, no, no. I need to rewire my brain because normally my brain goes to, oh, well, screw the world. They're all terrible and they don't get my brilliance. Uh, next project. Uh, uh, now I'll prove them wrong here. Uh, whereas uh, this is something where where I've I've got to I've got to rewire and, and be like, OK, well, it turns out we made it turns out the things that I thought were true. Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting turn of events. Uh, but, but it's been, it's been difficult, like, like, because it's, it's in, in some ways how kept me from enjoying it because I, um, you know, I keep thinking it's all gonna, <laughs> it's all gonna fail at any, at any moment, but, uh, it, it seems like it's continues to roll on. No, I'm, I'm, I'm onto a new set of megrams now where I'm terrified that we're not going to maximize our benefit out of it. <laughs> that's, that's my new thing I'm terrified of. Uh, well, I, that's a whole nother fun thing we can go down. Yeah, but I, you know, the, like for me, the analogy, Brian, was like a book. Like once I learned I could write a novel, I'm like, oh, I have a power now. I can write a novel. And, and maybe this one doesn't get every benefit that I can get out of it, but there can be another and another and another. Right. Uh, that was a huge part because it was about halfway through raise the dead season two that i kind of cracked my own production philosophy and then i did feature story and then i did crystal when i was literally going insane on my roof <laughs> and and then uh i did raise oh, I mean, maybe raise the dead season two was around then uh maybe it was crystal and anyway regardless of the of, of the of the pattern uh world's greatest con was the first big version of that i'm working with somebody outside of of my own head who you know has his own brand and we're going to try and leverage that and put it all together on a conceptual level and it was like now i feel very confident that i can i can produce like that is a thing i know i can produce podcasts i know i've got a system for it and and i know i am good at it and that god i mean that really was uh a like discovering a superpower. That's yeah. That's the analogy I like because it's just sometimes we can do a thing and like, oh, I can do a thing. But then there's a point where, you know, like, you know, like, Oh, I don't know. Writing for me is going to be a, it's a journey. You know, I hope to improve and to keep working as a writer and improving as a writer for the rest of my life. And even if we're in a simulation, I get to live a million years. I want to keep getting better and learning different things about it. But you reach a point where you're like, okay, I'm past the point where I, I know how to make it. I know that I can make a thing that's good. And I think I can be better. I can do it reliably enough, not always, but reliably enough. And then you feel like, okay, cool. Not, Oh, I got this, but like, no, I, I get this. I get this. And, and to me, the time I really believed it was when I got to that, that, early point that 25% of, of of the way there point where there were enough times that I listened to what I've now kind of come to know as, as the garbage cut of, of the episode. And I listened to it and it sucked ass and I fixed it. And then it was like, Oh, that's what the job is. The job is to yeah. get a garbage cut, listen to it, hate it, uh, and then unlike when I offer unsolicited notes on other people's things, I can keep all of my, all of my, 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 my petty, but you shoulda, uh, 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 thoughts to myself. I can hoard them, which also benefits the world. Cause now they don't have to hear it. Uh, uh, and I can, I can put all of my self-loathing, what I've been working on for, for nigh on 39 years, uh, uh, 
and 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 just burn away all of the garbage with this like highly sophisticated self-loathing beam and and just melt it all away and then it's like oh that's the story in the that's chat that's amazing and i could do it enough that i'm like that's what production is in the that's chat they're shouting uh, release the garbage cut i can confidently say never going to happen <laughs> too much mm. self-loathing uh there are there are cuts like, of of raise the dead that end with me after recording it yelling at myself knowing that i'll listen to it <laughs> like on 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 my walk uh uh that i'm just like like this sucked you know it sucked this thing sucked you you, you <laughs> this is garbage why did you even write this uh but yeah but that's that's my process my process is just understanding that there has to be a moment where you break it like just get a first draft and then shatter it a million different ways as soon as you find what matters, what what is the beating heart of it? There's a Tarantino talked about like uh, what's Tarantino's first film? Um, uh, Reservoir um, Dogs. Wrong. My best friend's birthday. Uh, you see, <laughs> we talked about Reservoir Dogs. We fell into the trap. He went and made like my best friend's birthday, and it was just it was crap. And he's like, I'm editing this, and it's crap because I know, but I learned because I learned. I realized, you know, why this sucked and why this crapped. And then he goes. And then his second film is Reservoir Dogs. Yeah. You know, Brian Singer did uh, Public Access, which nobody talks about. Like, oh, it's an okay, you know, whatever, indie sort of. It's not like a, it's really not, it's really not that great. Yeah. And then he does Usual Suspects. And you're like, how did this guy go from here to here? Because this guy, like Tarantino, like he watched this, and you know nobody knows more about film than Tarantino, and he he got all the stuff out of his head, all of his bad ideas and things like this, and got himself to a razor point where you can go do that. You walk, you watch parts of like you know you're like, this guy did Reservoir Dogs, yeah. <laughs> you know this kind of full fiction, but he learned, he learned. So, and that's you know the benefit of the podcasting process is that you can, you know, unlike film, uh, you can redo things a lot <laughs> or or you can yank it or you could pretend it never happened or 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 well no i know i know i, like, I, I just yeah, mean in, yeah. in, in in the process of like you know uh refining if if the process is is largely on the refinement it's very easy to just get back in front of a microphone and, and re-record stuff in and, and that was the biggest thing was proving that i could do that with somebody that wasn't me where i could just force myself to get in front of the microphone and re-record stuff whenever I wanted, oftentimes during editing, like I would just be like, oh, well, this needs this. And that's why Lyndon Johnson is a map, map, map. Like I, I could, I could just do that myself. Uh, can I, can I say the biggest surprise to me was how seamless for the most part, there, there are some times you could tell this is a first time trying a thing. This is an emotionally raw moment. This is an early morning. This is a late afternoon. I'm more, but, but, but in general, uh, I'm surprised at how stable my voice appears because uh, you you Frankenstein a lot of lines from a lot of different cuts and and I've had nobody complain that that it sounds like patchwork. I'm on my George Lucas baby. Dude, you I'm are. Just, I'm just you waiting. are. I'm just I'm just waiting until I can uh, I can AI I can AI my Brian voice. <laughs> just just uh, I I I, uh, I look at the script and it just says A R B B. <laughs> uh yeah i mean look audio software has come a long way you can do it's, it's smooth man you can do a lot in adobe audition i will i will tell you this like adobe audition was the difference between me having a cool idea and uh now uh, of having a production company like that that is that that is that is the 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 foundation on which all of it is built and holy crap is it powerful? If you want to get into this kind of stuff, uh, like I, I was self-taught, and I don't even think I went through the tutorial. Like uh, <laughs> I, I learned a lot just ran, ramming my head against the the wall, and uh, it's it's been good. So uh, try it. I would I would recommend it if you want to make uh, higher quality stuff. Uh, also, also if we're rounding the corner at the end, uh, this is the moment, man. Uh, all four episodes are out. There'll be a fifth, but the fifth is going to be a little bit of navel gazing Epilogue. and 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 where we're headed in the future. Um, this is the story. Uh, 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 I, I can't speak for Justin, but it feels like 
uh, one of the best things I've ever been part of, full stop. I, 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 uh, now's the time to pick up the phone and tell just one other person. Get, uh, listen to it and tell one person. Uh, yeah, no, this is, uh, this is a big moment. I think, um, uh, uh, it's, it's the culmination of, 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 you know, a lot of hard work. Uh, I, I would like to, uh, you know, make sure that everybody knows that it was, um, something that we really appreciate the, the, the support on, but I do agree with Brian, uh, uh, the best way to spread the word on this is, is make a phone call, go see a friend in person that, you know, that might be into something that involves, you know, uh, storytelling or scams, cons, world war two history, uh, uh, anything and, and go do it because I, I think that there is from the moment that, uh, you know, Brian tells his story of getting scammed out of speakers in a Home Depot parking lot, uh, you know, to the very end, which ends in the most, you know, grandiose way uh, uh, where we're literally we're talking about the fate of the free world. Uh, it, it's it, it's it's a really fun story. And now you don't have to wait. It's all streaming right now. So go ahead. Greatest Con Podcast dot com is where you can get all the links to all the different uh stores but uh uh go ahead and get on it because uh i think it's i think it's something pretty cool uh also there's a company that makes uh vinyl lps on demand here in austin they're super super overwhelmed but i think i'm gonna get a two disc lp made limited edition oh yeah like just oh oh, oh yeah and by the way folks if you guys are into watching or, or uh, a lot of people uh they're, the idea of what a podcast is is a thing that happens on YouTube. Uh, uh, go to the Scam, uh, scam Stuff. stuff. Yeah. YouTube.com slash Scam Stuff. You'll see uh, the first three episodes are posted. The fourth one should be up tomorrow, but uh, but then you'll be able to, to share it with all your friends. I actually went out and bought a reel-to-reel -reel recorder just so that we could have an interesting visual element. As a matter of fact, uh, if, you, if you don't mind playing uh just a little bit of that view meter like there's this great moment at the at the end where it's like it gets quiet and you just see the view meters totally dead oh right really? and then that that sweeping music begins to come in and you see the needles start to start to barely oh, pull that's crescendo great. up it's pretty great uh so go ahead and check those out i think those videos are super cool uh picks uh world's greatest con it's a podcast <laughs> greatestconpodcast.com um, trying to think of things that we used. Uh, oh, I, I like to plug Fireside FM. Uh, uh, it's run by our friend Dan Benjamin. It's a podcasting platform, but I've used it for uh, politics, 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 and now uh, for for World's Greatest Con. It is good analytics, uh, uh, an easy way to publish stuff, an easy way to submit stuff. Uh, 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 I would, I would, I would recommend it. Oh, also, it just makes a super easy website, which is something that I think is really awkward with um, podcasts because you know there's there's not a ton of great ways that you can kind of create a super easy website, and they do it automatically pre-populated with the stuff that you're there you're there for. That's where Greatest Con Podcast uh, goes to. And you want to know what? It is simple. It has it has links. It has players. It gets the job done. It's all we need. And so, uh, uh, I. I Shout out to them, Fireside yeah. FM. Shout out also to Cool Edit Pro from 1999. Which is actually how Brian recorded all his track. <laughs> I'm going to do a, a, a tech pick. I've been using this lately. I've been pretty happy with it. Sometimes when I work on a software project, I've got to have a couple different elements. I've got to run a server. I've got to do a front end. And I've got to do everything else. And usually I'll do it on, uh, you know, do it on my computer here. But the problem is sometimes I have to do four or five things at once. And it gets problematic trying to track stuff. And so Replit is a company that makes a online uh, editing system that you can then run your server and you can do that. It does Python. It does a bunch of different languages. So if you like the code and you're looking for a way to sort of just do it all in the cloud and run your multiple services and do that, uh, it's actually been super helpful. So i am a, a been using Replit lately, so I've been pretty happy with that. And they have a free plan if you want to try it. Nice. Brass. Uh, no, no pics. Uh, check out World's Greatest Con. Just search it in all the podcast directory. Yeah, baby. Oh, fine. I take my pick back. World's Greatest Con. <laughs> actually, actually, uh, great night. 
is starting tomorrow. Ah, oh, that's right. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it. Our triumphant uh, return to Tuesday night live uh, uh, shenanigans. I'm, yeah, I'm very no excited. More, no more audio only. Uh, uh, just a little bit longer. June will uh, end uh, on June 29th. Uh, that is when we will uh, return on Tuesday nights, uh, two hours uh, earlier right. than it normally so, is. Uh, and we go into the next month. Did you call me a liar, lie? Did you, did you <laughs> yeah. call me lie? Did you, did you lied. <laughs> you liars. You liars. All uh, you haters. But uh, yeah, no, check that out. Uh, uh, it's man, I'm I'm so pumped to get back to doing it. We've got a whole new set here that I'm like looking at out of the corner of my eye. Uh, uh, man, there's a lot of stuff going on. I'm I'm really glad that we were even throughout all this process. We were able to. We never missed a week in terms of the the podcast on on the night attack feed and this will be a, a i don't know i'm i'm, I'm super pumped to, i mean to we, get back we, to we know we can't make everybody happy but i'm really happy for the people who are like i'm kind of sad the ghost attack is going away <laughs> uh, become a patron yeah become a patron you're still gonna get that same that same kind of stuff uh you can uh right we're gonna still use the night attack feed so if you're already subscribed to that podcast feeds uh just, those will be there yeah uh i think we're we're gonna consolidate to one video feed, but I, I we'll we'll figure that out. Um, I think we still have Twitch.tv slash Night Attack. I don't I don't know if slash when we'll change yeah, that. Yeah, but, it, uh, if and when we change it, everybody who's subscribed will still be subscribed, and uh, uh, you know we're not gonna do anything that's gonna break anything. So uh, uh, just uh, get ready to go where you normally go. You will be able to find it. It'll either be called Night Attack or Great Night, but either way, we'll be there Tuesday. Two hours earlier than we normally are, so it'll start at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Right. It's been after. <sighs> All right, everybody, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna we're gonna go offline here. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. We will be back in a few hours with Cord Killers, uh, and um, and then uh, great night do, tomorrow. Uh, we have Ayaz, right? Hopefully. Hopefully. Allegedly. I guess we'll find out. Allegedly. Allegedly. Supposedly we do. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, from three people and a lawyer, uh, have a good rest of your Monday, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>